right, pretty. And your little dog, too. Hello, Susan. Where's my camera? Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Welcome to Disclosure tonight where my camera doesn't work. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessler, and this is Disclosure tonight. Not even the logos are showing up. There we go. Happy freaking Saturday, everybody. It's the day of the week, down to the hour, minute, and second. We get to talk about those things the government won't. Those things from science fiction, and yes, those things, well, you know. From the X-Files, what things are we talking about, folks? We're talking about the things that you can go out and see over your house in the evening, but you just need to go outside and look up. Yes, as the government continues their 75-year war against the extraterrestrial presence. How do we know? Just take a look, folks. It's all military. It's all part of the military complex. It's something that they've been going around, taking the alien creatures, ripping apart their DNA, and what they can possibly do, because it's all part of the military. It's all military videos. It's all military sensors. It's all something that we're going to have to figure out as we're getting through this, because it's a crazy day, and this is one day like no other, as they're taking our DNA to match that against those of the aliens and using the technology for their weapons of mass destruction. That's why we come together many nights a week on Disclosure Tonight to talk about the latest news, the latest updates, and today is like no other. We've got Rick Doty back and also David Smethurst uh, from the United Kingdom and our usual crew and our uh, in the viewer calling. Yes, I'm a little flustered because I went to go deal with my camera and it's not there. And we're not going to listen to the idiots from the White House or the bozos from the DOD because you know what? They've been covering up for far too long. It's, it's about time. Well, the public has woken up. Hearings are on their way, and we're going to figure this out with another episode of Disclosure Tonight. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. What happened to me? <laughs> Where did I go? Oh, there's the desk. <laughs> I have no idea how I flew off the edge of the world. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, Thomas. Hey. Can you switch the microphone for the people in the back? Oh, I did not know it was switched. Let me go ahead. Yeah, it's. I thought it was set up. Well, it should be set up. Let me go ahead and take a look uh, how it is set up. Hold on. All right. Where's I can actually play a song for that. There we go. Let's take a look and see what microphone we have on for the people in the back. Will you take a look and see? Well, yes, they have the wrong mic on. Now they've got the right mic on. Am I good, Larry? Yes. Excellent. On that note, let's go ahead. Yes, a little bit rough start more than usual what we have to the show, but on that note, let's go ahead and, and take a look who we have out there. But wait, before we get everything started, we've got a super chat that came in. Believe it or not, who is it coming from? Well, let's take a look and see. There you go. I want to thank Saucer Searcher. Thank you, Saucer Searcher, for starting off Super Chats today. Remember, every dollar that comes into Disclosure tonight goes back in the production of our show. We appreciate and are very humbled by your love and support for the show. A pound gal was a lot more in the United States than it does in Canada. Well, even goes farther in Canada for that matter. But thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Holy cow. Uh, thank you, Saucer Searcher. You're new to the show. Thank you for uh, your first time super chat. Absolutely. On that note, let's see who we have out there. In addition, we've also got, we've got Sven, 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 and Sven. <laughs> Thank you, Sven. Oh, Sven and the Demon. Uh, also known as Paul Francis having a good time. They are chilled. What's up? What's going on? Yeah, I started up. I put out the uh, welcome for the show before I went to bed last night so I didn't have to jump out of bed early and get this thing set up, which sometimes I have to go ahead and do. Let's take a look and see who else we have out there. Moody Mongol is here. Good to see you, Moody Mongol. Sandy Mitchell is around. Let's take a look and see who else out there. Rach Beal made it. Good to see you, Rach. Holy cow. Speak life. Where has Swan been lately? <laughs> we will figure that out shortly. And he, he's the person holding, yes, the light. Or is he holding the sun? We'll figure that out. Uh, also, who else we have out there? Let's take a look and see. Wow. Moody Mongol, yes. A lot of great conversation. Rick Doty. I guess we have to wait one more hour. Yes, Rick Doty is here again. He is, a, after a great show last night, he's back for more. Uh, Rick Doty is in the chat and he's in the back. Can't wait to bring him out and see what he has to say. SeaTac is around. Good to see you, SeaTac. As always, long time no see. 
Uh, who else do we have out there? Shelly Montgomery is in the back, and she's in the chat as well. Thank you for the love to, for Tom, for myself and Cupcake. Michelle made it, as well as Raven Creek Charms. Would you look at that, Mr. Promotioner? It's Anonymous Rest. Thomas, thank you for another awesome show. We all look forward to joining in on the wonderful weekend conversations, covering the week's events. Rock on, friendo. Good to see you, Anonymous Rex. It would be great to have you in the back sometime. Who else do we have out there? Remember, you don't have to show your face. Just come along with your logo and Anonymous Rex, and you can just be anonymous for that matter. Michelle is around. Adam Pomeroy. Welcome, Adam. Good to see you. I just want to say uh, that I think the building is most likely Egypt. Well, talking about that one particular building that's out there that Rick, uh, we actually were talking about that Rick dropped the hint. It might be somewhere in Australia. We'll have to get to that. Who else do we have out there? Anonymous Rex is still around. Thomas Whitmore is in the chat. Thanks for coming out today, Thomas. Scrumpy Joe is around. Good to see him, sir. Uh, who else do we have out there? Remember, Tom Whitmore, you can always join the back. You're always welcome here at Disclosure tonight. Absolutely. Paul Murphy is in the chat, and I think he's in the back as well. I could have sworn I just saw his name. There he is. Good day, everyone. Good day, Paul. Hopefully, uh, the may the uh, value of the Canadian dollar ascend. Uh, who else do we have out there in the back? Let's take action in the audience. Cat is here. Hello, everyone. Last night's show was amazing. Looking forward to tonight's. I am as well. I've been running around with a cupcake and getting the show ready. It's been a, one of those mornings. Misty Rainey is around along with Amiga Rules. Good to see you, my friends. Who else do we have out there? Let's take a look and see. Would you look at that? All the way from the great state of Florida. One of our regular ladies who comes into disclosure tonight. It's Peggy with Crockin' and Tubbs. On that note, hey, Google. What's the temperature in Florida? Currently 89 degrees. Due to current humidity, it feels like it's 100 degrees. Wow, it is scor- It's hot out there, but it's even more humid. Stay inside, enjoy the air conditioning, and watch Disclosure tonight. Thank you for coming around, Peggy. We love you, my dear lady. Uh, and thank you for all the messages you always routinely send across. It's always a lot of great information for me to check into. Would you look at this? Mr. Good looking An- Matt- Anthony Mack after death is here along with A. Phil is around who else do we have out there bill h has made it all the way from our discord uh oh, evan b is here good to see you my friend we're over halfway through this lance to the producer good to see you lance all right metal gaming all the way from denmark thanks for stopping in and talking with dodie after last night's show it was wonderful to have you around metal gaming great to see your face and not your snapchat for once holy cow he's getting more comfortable with us i tell you uh let's take a look vitska made it in good to see you vitska happy freaking saturday to you uh I think it's still Saturday everywhere for the most part. No, actually, Australia might be Sunday already, so I will get corrected on that one. Edmund184, welcome, Edmund184. Good to see you as well. Who else do we have out there? Let's take a look. Tony D made it in. Happy Saturday, Tony, along with The Grip Ripper. The Grip Ripper has made it in. Hey, all thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. Ah, it's never too frightening. I don't, actually, we don't get thunder and lightning. Uh, Pacific Northwest here, maybe once or twice a year. It's kind of nice. No, that none of that. No tornadoes. Although we are surrounded by, by volcanoes, <laughs> you got to have fun with it. Who else do we have out there? Let's take a look and see. Christopher Reedy is here. Welcome, Christopher. Happy Saturday to you. George Sanqui made it in along with Bush Light. Where's Bud Light? Good to see you, Bush. Um, hopefully not George W. <laughs> Lori Alfont made it in. Good to see you, Lori. Uh, who else we have out there? Liliana Chuna. Welcome, Liliana. Great to see you in on the show today again. Uh, thanks for coming back to Disclosure tonight and being a regular subscriber to the program. Remember, it's a great way if you're enjoying the show, always to hit that subscribe button and be a part of the show going forward. Absolutely. We don't, I promise, not to over spam you with uh, too much stuff. Aubrey McLeod made it in. Golden Leia is around. Welcome, Golden. Good to see you along with one of our friends, Frymon Nipples. I got to laugh every time I say that. E talking is around. Hi, all. And Ricky Ticky 166 is the man. You all have no idea how much he knows and what he contributes to my own independent research. Well, good to know, E talking or E T talking. Well, sounds like you got another fan out there, Rick. Truth Entertainment made it in as well. Let's see who we else have. We have out there. Space Today is here along with Jenny Whitebeer, all the way from uh, Space Dart Radio Land. She's a regular over there, and sometimes she's a regular over here. Love you, Jenny. Stephen Rooker made it in. Good to see you, Stephen. Who else do we have out there? Stephen Harding make it in. Ty Thomas, still loving the show. Thank you very much, sir. I greatly appreciate that. Justin Scott. with the, I said it was going to look like the Death Star. No, it's a Death Bird. 
Great to see your little birdie, the, the, your little bird friend, my uh, my dear friend. Starduster is here. Project Grudge also made it in. Anyone else? Owen from Ohio. It's 85 degrees. How about that in Ohio? Nice and warm. But you know what? It is 67 degrees here in the wonderful state, Pacific Northwest, with a 16 air quality index. It's pretty close, as good as you can get to around here. Two heads, 666, made it in. A little controversial, but you know what? That's actually could be a good number. You never know. Brian Morgan made it around. Good to see you. Feigen Shaw, 87, is around. Good to see you. Feigen Shaw, AVM. All the way from India. Thanks for coming in today, my friend. Stephen Rooker is around. Joe Quizner, uh, Quinzer. Hello from North Dakota. Good to see you, my friend. Kick back and enjoy the show. We've got a good one coming our way. Would you look at that? Another super chat came in. I think that's what Larry was hinting at before. This one coming in from Jenny Whitebear again. My hero. Love to see the super stickers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny Whitebear, for everything. My God, I appreciate the. The support we're getting here at uh, at Disclosure tonight, absolutely, yes. I haven't had enough coffee, if you can tell. (laughs) Kevin Clark has made it in. Who else we have out there in the audience? We're almost through this. DC made it in. Good to see you, DC. And Kat and Evan B. Uh, I think Mark Kyle is here. That is it. That is our our welcoming our audience. Yeah, a bunch of people here today. I'm racing through this because some coffee and these lights are just too bright. What's that, Cupcake? Oh, here will be your show. <laughs> She's running around. Lord William, he comes in peace as well. I believe Lord William is usually in the chat, and he's also in the back. He's not in the back today. But either way, thanks for coming in, Lord William, and showing off that beautiful Corvette. My God, the C8 Corvette convertible in that beautiful blue. Armando Torres made it in Houston. We have a problem. All right, let's go ahead on this note. Let's go ahead and welcome the people who we've got in the back. Let me bring up the screen. There we go, Larry, Larry Gernt. How you doing, my friend? Happy Saturday to you. I'm doing great. Happy Saturday to you, Thomas. And it's great to see you. And I just wanted to mention that just before the show started, somebody asked Rick, how much of an impression did Grush make on the Senate or, or Congress? And he answered, that was not me, only... That Larry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll, get that, we'll get to that really quickly. We'll get to that really quickly. Let's get the rest of the back in here. I I wanted to get to his answer, though. But, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Let me just welcome everybody in. Put up your hand. We'll be happy to go ahead and cover that. Absolutely. Who else we have in the back? We've got Andy W. Also known as Yellow Tommy Tanker. Welcome, Andy. How are you doing today, my friend? Hi, Thomas. Yeah, really good to be back live. Yeah, good to see you again, my friend. You're yes, sounding nice good back. and looking good. Thank you, sir, for coming out today. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the slight abuse last night. I do like it, really. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. Also in the back, we've got <laughs> the Cosmo Fang. Welcome in, Cosmo. Thanks for coming back again today. All right, Thomas. Pleasure to be here. Can't wait to have a discussion with y'all about all of the news coming forward. Absolutely. And also across the pond, someone who we've been trying to get on disclosure tonight. For the longest time, also a fan of Rick Doty, David Smethurst. Welcome, David. How are you doing today, my friend? Oh, I'm great, Thomas. Can you hear me okay there? Yeah, it's great. I feel like I know you all. I've listened to this show for so long. So, yeah, it's great Yeah, and be I've been here. talking with you so long on Twitter yeah. and everything. It's great, exactly. finally great to see the guy, see, yeah. see the voice, actually see the face and hear the voice of someone hey, that I... See, who my, I wa- my wife's on holiday, you see, Thomas, this week, so I can do the show easily enough without getting told off. <laughs> after 10 o'clock it's family time normally. oh so there yeah you go. i've got you i've got you and i need to go in here and i've got to fix one thing now that yeah. i see that your name is getting cut off by my green screen yes i was doing some things let's go to this let's go to that and trim it in a little bit there we go now the key is looks properly in your name all right thank you for coming in dave also in the back we've got lee also known as lm thanks for coming in today lm yep Thank you, guys. Looking forward to hearing some great things from our panel and uh, audience members. Don't forget, come back and join in. Absolutely. Also in the back, we've got the Paul Murphy, all the way from the great state of... Welcome, Paul. Hey, guys. How you doing? Great to be here. Looking forward to the show. Oh, same here. Also in the back, we've got the Swan Patel. Hey, uh, great to be here. Good to see you as well. Also, we've got the Shelly Montgomery. Hi, Shelly. Hey, Thomas Cupcake. Um, hey, Thomas, I think Kelly's, uh, not Kelly, but uh, Rachel's going to join us. Oh, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. Also in the back, we've got Syrup. Welcome, Syrup. 
Hey, what's up, Thomas? Not um, much. How's it pouring, my friend? It's good. Can I say something real quick? I'll make it super quick. I was not one to say, but every time I get on Twitter, there's always tough guys in on Twitter that want to hurt people, and want to fight people. Yeah. I just got to say, if you're not actively competing in mixed martial arts, don't be a tough guy. Let's just keep this about UFOs and trying to get to disclosure. Think, Stop being so tough on Twitter. It's so annoying, man. I, I don't even want to get on Britain. Twitter no more. But I anyways, say bring it. I live in Atlanta. Please show up so I can kick your ass. It's so <laughs> annoying. Um, I can't wait to hear from Larry. I can't wait to hear from Rick. I can't wait to hear from Swan. It's going to be a good show tonight, Thomas. And uh, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Anderson Stickle just joined. And then in the back, we've also uh, uh, we've got Zave B. Welcome, Zave B. Good to see you. Good to be here, Thomas. Can't wait to see what we get to cover tonight. Yes, and saving best for last. I could have done it first, but I figured it'll be a bigger impact that we can we can go ahead and uh, jump into this. Rick Doty, welcome, my friend. Great to have you back again. We are so privileged and thankful to have someone with such a repertoire and someone who's involved in disclosure. You, you've for those who don't know Rick Doty, Rick Doty, you can look at him as one of the first whistleblowers. He was part of the disinformation misinformation campaign that was being put out by the uh, the federal government back in the day. He worked for AFOSI and uh, had some interesting things that he did under the direction of the federal government. And since he's been out, he's been working on the opposite side of disclosure, trying to bring out the truth. It's truly a wonderful privilege to have you around, Mr. Rick Doty. Thanks for coming in today. Oh, thank you for that fantastic introduction, Thomas. It's, you're such a gracious host, and I really enjoy being on your show. I uh, had a great time last night, oh, yeah. and uh, we're going to have a great time this afternoon. I, I also sent you some emails. Oh. Uh, whenever you get a chance, look at those. They're, they're very interesting. Is that stuff you want to cover today, or is that stuff for another Yeah, day? yeah, yeah, something. No, I think we can cover that today if you— Sure, let me get the glasses uh, that are— whenever you, wh whenever you get a chance. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Now, I think, uh, Larry, you were bringing up something from last night with regards to a situation that Rick had said or whatever that you wanted to cover. No, just real quick, before the show started, Salon asked him, um, how big of an impression did Grush— make on the senate and he said not only big but he said big big and so that that's good information yeah do you want to expand on that one rick well yeah he did he he won uh, a number of senators i don't i don't know about the house members but uh david uh, his testimony uh what he was able to bring over uh i know six uh, senators who are probably on the fence about this subject, but uh, after listening to what David presented and how he presented it, uh, they're they're on our side now. Good, thank God. Good to hear. And I'm going to save. I'm going to save something uh, for later. But I talked about the admiral last night uh, that is going to come forth uh, and. I'm going to name him because he's already been on a podcast. So, so uh, here in a little bit, we'll we'll go ahead and name the admiral. Absolutely, cool. thank you very much. Uh, great to hear. There's a lot of stuff going on everywhere. Um, before we jump into some of the stuff, uh, one of the things that was actually just brought up by was that syrup was about a lot of the intense infighting that goes on in the UFO community. It seems like. You know, because there's this level of an anonymity that is, that's out there and people are going behind pseudonyms or just behind a name. They're not in person. There's a lot of uh, name calling and insult, insulting going on. And there's an active disinformation campaign going against people like Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, and a lot of the people who were involved, even hell put off at times, coming from Pete, the likes of John Greenwald, John G Greenstreet, yep. and others. And it's just... Uh, even Christopher Sharp from the Liberation Times, I heard about that. There was a tweet I unfortunately responded to uh, from Dave Beatty, who brought out additional information regarding the uh, the sighting that Jer Jeremy Corbell went out there and really pushed forward about the stuff that happened over in, was it California or whatever, the, the 30 Marines, where the, uh, the uh, who was it, uh, additional uh, photography was released by the military to show that it was a certain kind of a balloon that went out. And not a balloon, a certain kind of a uh, parachuting flare that was there that was taking care of it. And it's something that when people were ripping about Dave Beatty for bringing this info out, anytime you get more information that comes forward, 
you have to look at it and consider it and understand potentially if it's real or not. You don't need to take someone and drag them in the mud. By, by me going and uh, unfortunately supporting Dave on that, uh, I didn't realize that Dave is one of the crew who's actually going after Christopher Sharp. So Christopher, if you're out there, we've already I've already cleared that up over the phones. It's just it's uh, something that's an unfortunate situation when you get into it. There's a lot of personalities. There's a lot of things going on. And unless you're living in Twitter, you're not aware of what's going on. So potentially supporting one person, they're going to drag you into that you're supporting everything else that they're doing. And it's it's a hard life to live, isn't it, Swan? You have your hand up. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question for uh, Rick, but yeah, um, shout out to Chris Sharp. He's doing a really great job covering all this, and he deserves all the support he can get on this. He's he's a trooper, for sure. And uh, the haters who are trying to pull him down, they're going to get a, a taste of the med- medicine, hopefully, very soon, as the brutal reality of all this kicks in. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And it's going to be fun to watch them show their true colors of how much of a coward, how uh, vicious and vile these people truly are. But, Rick, yeah. my question to you is, so this HOC hearing is going to happen, so it keeps getting delayed and delayed. Is it possible, from what you've heard, that the Senate is not trying to prevent that but slow down the day of the date of the hearing and trying to push that back by having these whistleblowers come in on for uh senate um activities such as uh closed door briefings have you heard anything like that rick you're muted rick sorry there is some conflict between the house and the senate on the uh the type of disclosure and uh, how they the, how the House wants to do it compared to how the Senate wants to do it, the disclosure process. Um, the Senate, I'm more aligned with the Senate than the House, so I know more about the House, I mean, about the Senate than I do the House. So uh, I know there are some conflicts, but I think uh, the joint committee that the uh, that Schumer uh, pushed for has uh, has, has started uh, I think they've been uh, in existence for about a month and a half, and they're trying to coordinate these activities. So there's uh, some some type of uh, of uh, program between the two uh, uh, entities, the House and the Senate. So th- that's that's all I know about that so, that conflict. Uh, so this is speculation, but um, I'm hypothesizing that as this process continues, there's going to be a a new joint uh, committee to deal with this issue that will have the full power and um, they will be the ones doing hearings going forward. It's like a joint committee where all the, the senators and the house members of each member that's involved in the UAP issue will be part of like the committee on China. Maybe there'll be a committee on UAP. Have you heard anything about this Dodi that that might be in the works? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that for, the last uh, year or more, probably 15 months, they spoke about a, a special joint committee to handle this uh, uh, program and, or, or, or this disclosure. But I, I haven't, I don't think it's been organized yet. I don't think that there's, there's uh, uh, an active organization. There's, there's talk about it and maybe there, there's a lot of things happening behind the, the scenes that we don't know about. Uh, that that could possibly be, but uh, uh, th- there is there there was a plan at one time when this all started, probably going back to Harry Reid days uh, to have a joint committee, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay, and then my last question is: after the HOC and the Senate Armed Service, so the HOC hearing, uh, it looks like the date is going to be end of July. And then the Senate armed service hearing, which you're more aligned with the Senate is sometime in September by Senator Gillibrand. And they've decided to move to witnesses. So one of the things, um, Senator Gillibrand has said to Matt Laszlo, who's this, who's an investigative journalist who's been covering this topic since, uh, Grush came out is yeah. Senator Gillibrand told, uh, Matt Laszlo that, um, she said the uh, she said that um someone help me out here i'm blanking <laughs> she 
she told Gil- she told uh Laszlo that um that she doesn't tr- I I forgot my question. Sorry, I'm blanking. Oh, that's I okay. The- really quick. Just to, uh, before we get into the questions, if you uh, remember your question again, you can raise your hand. Juan, uh, one of the, I just want to quickly address he talking who vets Dave Gresh's story. It's called the Inspector, uh, the DOD Inspector General. So the DOD Inspector General took a look at the claims that was going on. They did their research. They came back and said, "Yes, this stuff is going on. This is very important, and it needs to be addressed." So if you're wondering now, this isn't like people who come forward for others. And they just want to go ahead and raise their hand and bring out the cash along with it. No, it doesn't go like that. If they say anything, if they lie to the DOD inspector general, they will go to jail. They will not pass go. They will not collect $200. No, they'll be fined tens of thousands of dollars and be thrown in prison for a period of time. So this is something you don't take lightly. So on your hand is up. He's also passed the congressional record, uh, the congressional inquiry under in the house as well. He passed with flying colors. But what I wanted to say, Dodie, is Gillibrand said that she said, we're going to listen to the whistleblowers. If they want to do a public hearing, we're going to do it public. If they want to do it closed, we're going to do it closed. And we're going to do whatever we can, whatever the whistleblowers want. And we're going to listen to them going forward. To me, that sounds like she's lost all faith in, in Kirkpatrick. Can you elaborate on... How does the Senate feel about Kirkpatrick as Grush and all of this is going on? Well, there are, we are primarily dealing with staffers uh, as, uh, in the Senate, and uh, there is some controversy about Kirkpatrick and oh, what he wants and what he's, uh, what he's put forth in a, a letter to, uh, to Senator Rubio. Uh, and I, and I'm sure there's a lot more to this that we are not privy to, uh, our group, but, um, I think there's some question about Kirkpatrick and, and whether he's, uh, what side he's on. And so do you, yeah. so the senators are starting to lose faith in him? Some of them are. Yeah. Some of them are. And I, I, and again, I'm only, we're only dealing with staffers, but I know there's a lot of staffers, uh, who are, and I, I talk about staffers. Let me. Uh, explain. Uh, most of these staffers are uh, veteran uh, military uh, personnel, uh, either retired or or had uh, some form of a career in the military or in the intelligence community. Uh, some are attorneys. Some are both. Uh, one we deal with. Uh, he's a, uh, uh, a former U.S. Air Force intelligence officer working in the same type of arena that I did, uh, and he's also an attorney. So th- these people can give good advice to the senators, and uh, I've de- I've dealt with uh, many of these staffers, and they're really really sharp. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the senator has so many things to do other than this subject. So, but the the staffers can uh, uh, stay on this subject and, and keep it. Uh, uh, keep it active for the for the senators. Thanks for telling us that, Rick. I just wanted to jump in because I don't think any of us had any idea what the composition of a staffer group um, would have been. So now I'm very encouraged that even if staffers only um, attend um, a briefing, that they're going to be able to be impressed with the magnitude of this and they're going to recognize that they can that they need to pass this on, right? Yeah, absolutely. If I could bring in a quick question then from the audience, uh, Brian Morgan asks, I'm curious about the Reddit post. I'm not sure if you saw it or not, Rick. It came out about, uh, if you want to call it, uh, uh, what do you call Lieutenant Dietrich, and who's married, I guess, to a microbiologist working on dead dead ETs in a lab. Are you familiar with the story? Any thoughts on it? Have you heard about it? Yeah, they're talking about Fort Dietrich. Oh, Fort Dietrich, gotcha. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, saw Dietrich, and I'm thinking Dietrich. Commander Dietrich. <laughs> yeah, uh, the 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 Mike, uh, He's a microbiologist. He released a long statement about uh, dealing with dead ETs at the lab. Uh, I know I read that, I, but I don't know anything firsthand about it. I never uh, was involved in any of that sub- subject. Uh, I think the guy you need to ask is Kit Green because he was the one that was intimately involved in that subject matter. 
and also with the uh, uh, the former uh, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, which is uh, all their work then went to Fort Detrick. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. One more before we get to the people in the back. Someone's asking, uh, they just want to under, understand some of your back history. What made you tell all? Well, uh, I had a lot of knowledge about what I did from 1979 until 1988, and then a little bit during the time with uh, Dr. Putoff. And uh, when my uh, MBA expired in, in 2002, I decided to go forth the best I could and uh, tell the story, at least what I could tell, because a lot of the stuff I did was classified. And so uh, that's my uh, motivation. I, I, I want I want the word out there. I think we can disclose a lot of what the United States government did in the, in the realm of uh, investigating uh, UFOs uh, from the 1947 on and all the intimate knowledge that we gathered from ETs and from ET crafts uh, up until now. Now, I realize uh, some of it's classified. And I acknowledge that uh, I, when my, I do my speeches or I'm, I'm, uh, I do my programs on, on uh, Gaia, but there's a lot of things that that's not classified that can be brought to the public, and that's my motivation for doing this. Excellent, great insight for it. It's it's great, you know. It's we all go through different things in our life, and you know, uh, as we go through, we reflect back on where we were in the past. And as I talked about in your intro, you went through a lot of stuff, and it's great to have you on this side of the fence as uh, as an ally for that that matter. A uh, if you want to call an advocate for disclosure is what we I think we we like to call you. Well, thank you. Yeah, that I like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also in the back with your hand up, syrup, my friend. Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask uh, Rick or anyone who may maybe have an answer. Is there some sort of acclimation process that the government had for this whole disclosure thing where they had a maybe a, a planned date to officially disclose this? And maybe that's why Arrow was put in place and the whistleblowers coming forward kind of through uh, through that through a wrench in it all. And yeah. Um, maybe that's why the Senate uh, was kind of freaking out. Maybe some people in the Senate were freaking out. Is there any anything like that that you know of? Well, Harry Reid had a plan uh, before he passed away. Uh, and that, that plan goes all the way back to uh, 1999, uh, where he wanted a slow process of, of disclosure regarding the subject matter. And, uh, but... Of course, he was the Senate a majority leader, then he became the minority leader, and uh, different uh, uh, things happened in world events, uh, different makeup in the Senate over the years where he was in charge, or then he was uh, the uh, minority leader in the Senate. So he was never able to push his disclosure process forward. He wanted it done in a certain manner. Uh, and I think some of the people that are, were really close to Senator Reid uh, tried their darndest to move it forward. And I think uh, Arrow and, and uh, uh, Lou's team tried, tried to do that, but uh, uh, there were a lot of obstacles in their way and they just couldn't get all, over all the hurdles. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that, Rick. Yeah. Dave, your hand is up next. Welcome. Yeah, got it. So it's, it's quite an honor to speak to you, Rick. I've always found you uh, very credible when I've heard you speak over a number of years. But you must feel quite vindicated now that uh, since uh, Grush has come out, he's sort of collapsed the Wayne form in a way in UFAP speculation. He's confirmed a lot of things we've previously speculated, which you've mentioned. So uh, just as an observation, you must feel uh, quite vindicated. I know you know it's true what you're saying, but in terms of all people listening to it, but on the Senate stuff, I wonder if you're a bit worried in Congress that people are playing for time a little bit, because that seems to be the pattern. I think they're very hemmed in, the DOD, the wider forces of non-disclosure. They're pretty pending, and the main strategy is to play for time, hope something turns up, put a fix in here and there like those checks the other day. And I just wonder if you guys and your team are a bit worried about, it must be hard to, if they're just playing for time and this, oh, this great unified committee that's coming up will do this. We'll soon be into the political season soon. 
And I, do, are you guys weighing that up, the time element versus the impact element? I don't know if you get what I'm sort of make point I'm making there, but it's uh, anyway. I'll leave it. See what you think. Yeah, David. Thanks, uh, uh, and thank you for those kind words about my my speak my speaking or my presentation in Manchester. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people worried about uh, world events, the upcoming elections, and uh, there's so many things in a world uh, headlines today that uh, kind of dwarfs the subject of of disclosure, uh, not to us, but to, to some others, policymakers. Uh, but the push has to be from the top. Uh, the, the Biden administration being the uh, in charge of the executive branch of our government, they're, they're the one he he or his office has to be the one that really, really, really pushes this. And I don't know that we have somebody uh, in the, as a national security advisor or uh, in the White House uh, that's pushing this along, uh, I think. Although there's probably some hurdles that they have to go over through uh, different uh, 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 branches of the military and the intelligence community who's trying to hold up some of this. But yes, I agree with you, David. There's 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 a uh, a lot of political maneuvering that dis disclosure people have to get around to uh, what, before what, this thing comes out. What was interesting, Rick? Sorry to interrupt. What was interesting though was if you remember when the the alleged balloons were shot down, when they were starting to accuse Biden of inaction and attacking his pre, you know, his presidential status and saying he was a lame duck president, they then very quickly switched to saying, "Oh no, we've got arrow set up. We've been doing loads of stuff here," and it sort of started to get under to the political conveyor belt in which it was like a shield he was using to defend himself. So it might be interesting if it comes onto the political mainstream. That he has to adopt it really and say and sort of say look at all these measures and he may pivot on that then and start to i don't know that might be wishful thinking but that's the only way i can see biden sort of pivoting on this and starting to engage with it when it you know when they say what have you been doing then and he can have to point to arrow you know well that's a good point um i think there's there's many things that happened behind the scene during that time period in january when when we spotted and tracked that object over alaska and it was shot down, and then the object over the Yukon in Canada, which was shot down, the one over Montana that wasn't shot down, but it was at least tracked and eventually shot down over Lake Huron. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that we don't know about. Uh, the military does things that uh, they're not going to tell us about. Uh, Biden certainly would know what what's going on, and I, I, I would have to... Uh, uh, say that he probably was right on top of all this stuff and he would have to give the order to shoot down, which he did. Uh, and so I, th I think uh, uh, there's a lot of things that we might blame the government for, but, but in reality, these things uh, are occurring behind the scenes that we just don't know about. And um, uh, so, uh, and, and one thing I wanted to comment on as far as vindication, uh, yeah, uh, David and and and, Grush and 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 there's going to be many others uh, coming forth, and and the admiral uh, who will probably be the next one. Um, uh, they, they, I talk about what they what he talked spoke have spoke about for many years, and now uh, all this comes back to, to show myself and others, not just myself, but there's many others out there that are talking about this subject. And they, they, yeah, it'll come back to vindicate us. Interesting. Interesting to say the least. Before I get to you, Larry, your hand is up next. I just want to bring in a question from Ramsey in, in the chat. Rick, uh, will Rick Doty testify before Congress? I think you already have, haven't you? I have given uh, two uh, detailed depositions to Congress, uh, one in January 2022 20, and one in September uh, long, uh, uh, I think originally it was only supposed to be an hour and we were in there for three and a half hours in January of 2022. And in September, uh, we were there about six hours in two different sessions though. They, they broke it up. So, uh, I, I did provide, uh, my testimony and I have, uh, I'm willing to come and, and testify in open session or closed session, however they want to do it. 
Uh, so, and they know that I'm available to do that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I appreciate that insight and everything. I know you've got some stuff you want to cover on the NSA in the, uh, nat- and the 18th Space Surveillance Squadron. Let's go ahead and just take care of the couple of hands we have in the back. We'll jump onto that if that sounds good to you. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for the full show. So oh, Absolutely. Hey, Larry, you get your hand up, my friend. Hey, hey Rick. Um, I've got hey. two questions. Uh, one, one is not a question. It's just a comment about uh, Ross Perot. I mean, Ross Perot. Oh, boy. Uh, Ross <laughs> Goldhart. Um, <laughs> Went, uh, went on another interview uh, that I was watching last night. And at some point he got to the question, um, basically portraying someone asking a question of Kirkpatrick and saying, have you been misleading us on this topic? Are you withholding things that people have told you? We'd like to know. So anyway, yeah, um, uh, that takes some. Yeah, balls, I agree but... with you. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree that uh, I think he has, uh, Patrick has, as uh, others have, um, and uh, there's a story I'll tell later uh, uh, about one of the the first, very first uh, um, hearings that they had, uh, where they had the three officers uh, in front of the House Committee, and uh, these these guys were all briefed. I'll, I'll go. I'll go through it right now. These these people. One of one of the staffers told us that every one of those people who were briefed did not discuss anything dealing with Roswell, not anything dealing what with the knowledge that the United States government had ha, has regarding UFOs. And and we all watched that uh, last June, and 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 it was disgusting because they didn't answer any questions, and even in the closed door hearings. Uh, they didn't answer anything. And and wh- why? What was their motivation uh, to do that? But they were told to do that uh, by some some entity within the government. And I think Kirkpatrick alluded to that in one of his speeches here a while back, but he didn't go into the great details on it. Uh, they want to hide something. And, and I think there's too much that's already been released out there to hide. That's very interesting, Rick, because... Um... I mean, why would they choose Roswell? There's so many incidents. Why would they choose Roswell as off the books? And then if you remember, uh, when Ross Coulthard interviewed Grush, he asked him about Roswell. And the first thing Grush said was that he was not authorized to speak to the details of that event. Um, what the, is it? Could it be, Rick, that, they're, that they don't want anything mentioned about that because they plan on starting with Roswell in their presentation, the Senate presentation that they're someday pie in the sky going to give us? You got it, Larry. You hit it right there. Uh, very smart person you, you are. Yeah, that, that's exactly the reason. They they want to hold the glory back a little bit. They, they uh, have a – I saw a draft uh, a while back of a, of a release regarding Roswell that was uh, created by a congressional a, a congressional staffer, not a – not a Senate staffer, but a House staffer. Uh, I was able to read it. It was just a draft. Um, it was an excellent presentation of of U.S. government involvement with the uh, subject of U.S. Uh, of, of extraterrestrials in the United States. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, wording in that release that I I question. Number one. They reiterated many times, uh, restated many times, the U.S. government's involvement with the extraterrestrials within the United States. Now, you can read a lot into that, meaning, well, before 1947, we must we must have known of something outside the United States. But they never say that. Right. Now, maybe they're going to come in with the, the 1933 uh, Italy thing or the or the thing in 1917 uh, that the object the the, the uh, orb that was seen in the trenches of France during World War One. What, I. What don't about know. the 18? Is it 1872? Whatever it was or something like that when we had the uh, cylinder or something crash into a windmill. 
I think it was 1897. 1897, yeah. Sorry, that's... Yeah. To Texas, yeah. And I was there. I mean, I went out there when I worked for Dr. Putoff. We went out there to look and see what we could find out there. Uh, Very, very interesting uh, uh, incident uh, if you you delve into it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And they actually, they took all the different, uh, what was it, all the wreckage and they threw it down a well? Yes. Yeah. Be interesting to see if that area is a hot spot for different cancers or different diseases to see if that would have happened in that particular area. Because if you throw that down into the well, it's be, it's going to be contaminating the water table all the way around that particular site. And apparently that did. That happened. There was some uh, contamination. Oh. Some people got sick and had ha- lesions uh, on their bodies. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Radiation. Absolutely. Radiation. Also, another question coming in from the audience. This one's coming in from uh, Susan Goff's time tra- traveling Caucasian. All right, Rick, are there uh, there are uh, are there known connections between neutrinos and UAPs? I know we've got that uh, neutrino detector at the South Pole, and one of the things they talked about, I think it was the middle of last year, about a year ago, was some of the detections they were getting were actually coming from inside of the planet, not outside of the planet. Yeah, I read that, but uh, I that that wouldn't be a subject matter I would know anything about. Uh, I know that there is a neutrino detector down there, and I yep. know basically how it works, but uh, that's that's all I know. Yeah, interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, all right, let's get through the back really quick, and then we can get on to so. Uh, Swan, you had your hand up. I got a bunch of people with their hands up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rick, uh, I have some questions for you. So, my question is. You said you the you can say the rear the admiral's name. Is it that Tim Goddick guy? Uh, you're muted, Rick. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's Tim Gallet. G A L L A U D E T. He's gonna be public at the hearings or is he gonna be public like on CNN or something like that, like how Grush went? Well, he was initially gonna be uh, at the hearings, but he he did a po- podcast yesterday, which uh, he outed himself. So uh, I guess uh, I don't. I don't really know now what his plan is, but he spoke in great length on a podcast yesterday. I think you can get it on YouTube. But oh, uh, he's, no, he's, he's he, yes, yeah. So yeah. so he's he's outed now, and he's the one that I was talking about. Interesting to say the okay. least. Okay, and my other question is: Are so? Is the Senate scared in a way that, like David Grush, because I saw it on um, Mark Kelly's face when they were asked about David Grush, his eyes popped out. He didn't want to answer that question. And I think the Senate was blown back and shocked that something like that actually happened, that David Grush would come out like that. Are they scared that other whistleblowers that are going to come out? And is that why the Senate is fully engaged when they get back from their recess. Um, they're going to have three weeks in July. Are they going to be really working on this issue? Well, I hope so. Uh, I, I you know, certainly can't dictate anything. And I, I, we, we only get bits and pieces of information from the staffers, but I, I believe they're, that's on their agenda. And I, I hope they move it up. You know, it's priority for us. It might not be priority for them, and they have a lot, lot of things to work on, of course. But, but I, I agree. That I think that they should make that uh, somewhat of a priority. Well, the thing that the problem is, if they don't make this a priority, that's going to make these some of these whistleblowers mad that have gone through the DOPS up process. That Arrow has no idea because Arrow didn't take any notes, so they can't rely on Arrow. So, and then, and then they just come out, and that just puts the Senate in more in jeopardy and just heats up the issue even more and more. Yeah, uh, you know, here, here's the pro- Here's one of the problems. Um, before they bring anyone in, any whistleblower in, they, they they depose them first. Every one of them depose, maybe once, twice, three times. And the reason they do that is, uh, depending on what the whistleblower tells them initially, they have to go back and check on the records. They have to go back and try to verify everything that whistleblower says. And that takes time, yeah, uh, a lot of time. And they don't have a lot of investigators to do that. They sometimes rely on outside 
uh, sources and, and outside contract investigators, uh, 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 contractors uh, that are licensed and have clearances through DARPA in order to go out and check these stories. So that's why it, it, can, t it can take some time. It's not a, a, they just don't, they can't just believe in once somebody says something, they have to go back and verify it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. Quick question for you, Rick. Any hard evidence coming up soon or coming out soon? Any thoughts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I think uh, they're going to, uh, there's a plan to release some of the information or some of the, the uh, analysis, some analysis of the material that was shot down over Alaska. Uh, I think that's uh, being pushed. Uh, there's one of the whistleblower. I don't know that I would call this guy a whistleblower, but he was uh, a contractor that worked in a laboratory, well, Los Alamos, I'll say the laboratory. They analyzed something that was brought to them. And what, what what's really keen about this is this is a great, great, great story. These uh, scientists at Los Alamos was brought an object, um, uh, and and uh, they weren't told where this object came from, or any any history about this object. And so they they take this object, they look at it, they analyze it uh, for uh, months, and then they come back with a finding. Okay, it's made up of this material and that material. We can't figure out uh, where it was made. It doesn't appear to be anything uh, that would have an origin on Earth. And I mean, it's a great, great story. And I'm just summarizing it here. That information, I believe, is going to come out here very, very soon. And uh, the results of their analysis is that this thing didn't come from Earth because we can't make that here. I mean, Los Alamos National Laboratories is one of the most renowned laboratories in the world uh they have the top metallurgists and 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 other scientists there so they can analyze something and say you know what you know this was made by russia or or great britain or somebody else but what they what they they determined that this wasn't made on earth and i think that's going to come out here soon interesting to say the least uh lord william your hand is up next hi rick how are you Good, good. good. I, have, I have two questions. Um, now, this material you're talking about, is it like a solid material, like a plane, like someone designed this material or, or, or material like from a meteorite or something? Well, how, how it looks, can you describe it? Uh, I can't describe it because all I know is what the uh, what information I just gave you, some kind of a widget, I call it a widget, uh, by the guy that was telling me this story within our group says it, it was just a, a widget, an object. A uh, heavy metal object that they brought there, but it came from the crash site uh, off the coast of northern Alaska. Now, I guess it was a metal uh, object, but that's about all I, I, I can tell you that, that, that uh, you know, as far as the description goes. Interesting. Thank you very much for the clarity on that. Um, there was another one I had coming up here to the question. Oh, yeah, this is a, a story we covered before. Uh, um, Einstein had a uh, assistant by the name of Dr. Shirley Wright, and her story was covered by uh, uh, investigative editorial journalist Anthony Bregalia, or Tony Bregalia, as I know him from uh, ufoexploration.com. Um, Tony actually, in part of his uh, working with the, I believe, the daughter of Shirley Wright, they were able to get a audio tape of Shirley talking about, or an interview of Shirley talking about um her, actually was it going down to new mexico or somewhere and then actually seeing crash materials and seeing in uh in a non-human ant intelligence as well when she was there are you familiar with that story do you think that sounds like a legit piece i mean for me it did yeah yeah, yeah it is uh during my time with the institute for advanced studies we did some uh, research into into her and her her family tree and her her daughter uh and the story that her daughter told to a a uh, i think it was a reporter or, or uh i'm not sure who but it was recorded right and uh, that's that's basically what she she told said that 
uh, they were taken down to New Mexico to a hangar at a at a base, and they were uh, uh, allowed to observe debris from a crash, uh, uh, extraterrestrial uh, flying craft or something that right. effect. And, and there's a lot. It was a long, uh, quite quite a long interview. Yeah, supposedly there's another tape that they're still looking for. Hopefully, one of the days they'll find that additional tape that was out there. It's, it's a great story. Uh, thanks for chiming in on that. Uh, we've got Dave and then Rachel. Dave first, and then after that, we're going to jump into an interesting conversation about the United States secret space program, the Alien Connection. Uh, let's jump back into the studio for a second until we can, uh, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, Dave, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, I, I heard that about the Einstein, you know, the Einstein and the secretary, and I thought it was very credible. I'm pretty sure I've heard that interview, you reverse talking. I'm pretty sure I haven't. Sounded very credible. Anyway, so just just to say that, what I was going to say, it's interesting. I can imagine all these senators having this nice plan of how they're going to disclose. You know, scrambling around how we're going to disclose. They tried to do it during Nixon and Bush, as I understand. They probably tried to do it with the time of Podesta, but clearly Dick Grush has just driven a coach and horses through their nice little plan, haven't they? I mean, I think of disclosure first as a confirmation of craft. Then maybe the next level is, oh, we've got some craft and bodies. The next level is maybe we've communicated. And the big one is the context and the real reality and what is the nature of it. You know, those four levels of where it could go, disclosure. And I thought, God, we'd be lucky in my lifetime to get to the craft bit, you know. And Grush has just come along and pushed it all through, you know, and really ripped up the paper. And I, just, I was just listening to you thinking the plan must be in tatters now of what they were thinking about doing in response to this. I don't know if, if that's your sense or if it, uh, uh, what the, what's the impact of Grush's, I suppose I'm asking you. I suppose. Well, the impact was great. I mean, there, there were a lot of senators uh, that, uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. Everything that Grush said had been verified prior, okay? Yeah. yeah. He, he gave a deposition six months earlier, okay? Uh, he gave, uh, I think there were three different sessions that he gave to, to diff various staffers and then uh, to the senator, to, the, the representatives themselves before he, he was interviewed uh, on camera. So they verified, they were able to verify all these things. And then, so when he opened up, and I think he said a lot of things uh, that he wasn't supposed to say. And that's, that's just my, that's my opinion. Okay. I don't think that they pr were prepared. They, the con congressional committee, the congressional committee was prepared to uh, hear what he, everything that he had to say about the 12 crafts and, and things. So, uh, but he, he opened up and uh, since then he's opened up on even some other things. So um, he has, he has got a lot of people's attention, uh, believe me, within the government. Interesting to say the absolute least. Thanks for that insight on that. Rachel Smith, you have your hand up. You have a question. Okay. First, I want to say hi to Mr. Doty and thank you for all of the work that you do towards disclosure. My question is really, really your speculation. In my mind, full disclosure comes with and or is inextricably linked to technological advances. But do you believe that the closer we come to full disclosure, that they will slowly release some of the things they have? Or will they just kind of tuck that in their pocket and say, you know, yeah, we've got visitors, but we don't know anything else? Well, Rachel, thanks for that question. Um, there, There's two aspects to this. There's the uh, uh, aspects, the aspect of the United States government obtaining something from an extraterrestrial source, analyzing it, reverse engineering it, and making it uh, known to the public. And I think that's that's been done. Corso talked about it. I believe everything he says, he's been verified by a number of other people. So Velcro and other things, uh, the diode and other other things that he that we were able to uh, bring into the public view. And then the other side of that is technology that we're using in the military or for weapon systems or space travel or our military technology. We won't, we won't find out about those. They're not gonna release that stuff to the public because the Russians, the Chinese and our enemies can get hold of that.
but I think I think some of the some of the information they're going to come out and say yes, uh, Velcro came from them, and some of these other things that we use today uh, came from extraterrestrial uh, research and development. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And last question before we jump into the presentation. Hey, Larry. You're, you're muted, Larry. <laughs> Sorry about that. First, I wanted to thank Rachel for jumping in and asking her question. It's really nice to hear from you. It was a good question. Um, I want to uh, just briefly talk before we move on to the next story about the question of um, malevolence and how people respond to that. So look at Ross Coltart. Last night, his most recent interview... <laughs> Um, he was talking about this technology being potentially world transforming, uh, almost like a utopia compared to what we've got right now. And he's not at all worried about evil aliens messing everything up. So even though he's fully aware that there have been malevolence and there have been incidents where humans have been killed by E.T., we need more information on that. I mean, it doesn't surprise me so much that that may have happened. I would like to see the context in which that happened. But the good news to me is that somebody who's in the know as Ross is, is not afraid of that. Now, Rick, last night, you mentioned that you know things, and I know you can't talk about them, but you know things that really did scare you. And... Um, I'm wondering what level of uh, fear do you have there? Do you, does it override the fear for the technology? And by the way, let me let me start over again. The technology, because Rachel brought this up, and she said that it's in, in, inextricably tied to technology, but she wants to know what's coming out um, in the government's plan. And I'm putting all my chips on free energy. Now, if you're telling me goddamn... Um, uh, Velcro is what we're going to fucking get out of this or, or uh, <laughs> fiber optic. I mean, for Christ's sake, uh, tell, make me feel a little better, Rick. <laughs> okay, Larry, I will. Yeah, there's many other uh, advances in technology that we got from the, uh, the ETs. Uh, uh, fuel systems, uh, I, think, I, think we, I think the hydrogen uh, fuel system that will be uh, prevalent one day. Uh, in in cars, uh, that'll be an option. Uh, the zero point energy, I think we've once we've mastered that, it's going to be some years down the road. Uh, I think those are the things uh, that I would like to see. Just like along with you, um, I think we we need uh, we need look uh, we need free energy. I mean, we need some sort of energy, and we have it. I think we have it that we're experimenting with right now that will advance. Uh, 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 and, and, and cut down on uh, fossil fuels. I think that's going to happen. I don't know when, but uh, I think it's, it's going to happen in the near future. So, uh, yeah, you. yeah, Larry, there's, there's, there's light in the end of the horizon there for you. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's good to know. Good to see. Absolutely. On that note, we've gone through all of our people with their hand up. I know that a lot of the people in the audience have a bunch of questions out here. Is there anything I missed? Uh, let's just take a look and see. Great comments. David Wright said, got that. Bloody mate. Oh, no. Um, I think you've mentioned this before. How many different species do we have here? Is it, it's like five or more than five, something to that extent? Five, yeah. Well, I knew of five. And, and I knew uh, uh, some of them to be hostile. In fact, an incident happened when I was in, in Area 51, uh, uh, which which scared the dickens out of me, and I'm not a I, I'm not easy to scare. I've been in a lot of situations during my uh, regular Air Force days as a combat controller, and then and then uh, even my days as an OSI agent uh, uh, that didn't you know I, I consider myself uh, kind of tough, and uh, I don't scare easy. But yeah. believe me, uh, when you see something that uh, you know is not from this world. And there's nothing that we, we can do to counter that. Uh, it's going to scare you. I don't care who you are, but it's going to yeah. scare you. I, I always have the line of eyes open, no fear, and you have to go into it. But some of the times it feels like it's like 
very close in proximity to you and it's a sound you've never heard before and it's just kind of there it just kind of chills you to the bone and saying oh god i'm here where I th- i'm not supposed to be afraid but the whole the whole key is you don't want to be afraid because that just opens you up for not thinking right not being able to process the information what are the things that i should be doing but yeah i hear you <laughs> you get you get close enough to it and you've got that right attitude coming into it but i guess it's just a practice of getting it and dealing with it one on one that uh uh can shake the shit out of you <laughs> Yeah, discretion yeah. is a better part of valor. <laughs> yeah, Rick, I have one one question for you. Now, you're talking about free energy. Where does free energy come from? Like, is it nuclear? Where is it coming from? He no, just said uh, hydrogen and, and zero point. Yeah. yeah, hydrogen would be one of them. Uh, there's different ways to, uh, uh, of course, hydrogen is in our atmosphere. We we're not going to run out of hydrogen. It's even in, in, in the universe. So if we can capture the hydrogen and place it in a particular type of container and add a little something to it, uh, we can create uh, energy and we can, can, can create uh, propulsion and, uh, uh, and, and a fuel system. So that's one. Uh, zero point energy is something that is really highly advanced to try to explain what it is. But it's something that uh, Dr. Putoff has been working on for many years. He knew it existed. The uh, Ebencraft of 1947 had it in it. And, uh, but now, over the 70 years, we've perfected this, uh, uh, at least in the experimental stages right now. Uh, again, it may be some years before we, we're able to use it, but it's, it's at least being experimented with. Interesting, to say the least. If I could, on Cosmo, you've got your hand up, but I've been keep on adding to the queue. What I want to get into here next is, uh, Rick, you sent across a presentation about the United States secret space program. And uh, and this is, uh, you're calling it the alien connection, but this is not like the super secret space program we've talked about, Greer's flying crafts, going out and visiting other uh, galaxies. You're talking about a space program that we've had for uh, almost equivalent to like what we had with Star Wars, for going and monitoring and understand what's going on in the world. I mean, or the, uh, the world around us, I should say. Right. What, you, what you're seeing there is an actual uh, a PowerPoint presentation I gave uh, to, to uh, uh, in a, a Gaia presentation and also to uh, members of Congress. I gave this exact presentation to, there were six uh, senators, 11 congressmen and staffers. I gave this presentation uh, a year ago, uh, February, uh, yeah, uh, year ago, February. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, year ago, February. And so this is the real thing. This is what, what we found out, uh, through the sources of information, which astonished the senators and, and, and congressmen listening to this presentation. But, um, and now, uh, I know it's been on a, on a web, uh, for some time, because uh, some of this information was in uh, in, in a book uh, that was released some some time ago. But anyways, we have a secret space program in the United States. It it, it doesn't involve sending crafts uh, to uh, uh, distant planets and fighting wars, uh, Corey Good stuff. It, it, it doesn't involve any of that. Randy Kramer's. Uh, it uh, all involves deep space probes that we, the United States government, have launched in space. Now, this presentation lasts about two hours, so I'm going to jump through this real easy. Tell me when I advance to a page when you want me to. Yeah, go, go, ahead and van- go ahead and advance. Uh, just keep advancing until I tell you to stop. Uh, right here. Okay, this, uh, this is part of the secret space program. These are the projects. Uh, Project Starbeam, uh, Night Trace, Snowbird, Amber Red and Tango Rose. Next, next one. Um, Starbeam examine ET communications technology found in the Ebing craft. So this is reverse engineering. We we were able to find the the communications device inside that Ebing craft in 1947. It took us some years to figure out exactly <laughs> what it is, but we were able to use it, uh, examine it, and 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 figure out how the Ebens use it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to 
to uh, duplicate it. Go ahead, next slide. A nitrase, uh, these are just uh, programs that NASA had that uh, uh, we've have, have, have delved into, like endurance, uh, endu a snowbird is endurance, how ETs can handle a zero gravity during space travel. You know, that's uh, very interesting. We've, uh, from the 1950s on up, we've had programs preparing astronauts for space travel. Well, the ETs have a different way of doing it. Uh, they pressurize, and I'm not giving away any secrets, they pressurize their, their interior part of the spacecraft, not, not the way we do it. They do it in a different manner, and I'm not going to go into great details of that, but that's how they... Because they're flesh and bones just like we are, and most of them are. So they're going to be harmed by uh, uh, zero gravity and, a, and propelling a craft and stopping. But they, they, they pressurize their cabin in a certain way, interior of the spacecraft, to prevent that from happening. Go ahead. Next, uh, next slide. We'll just keep on going because this is some of this is just historic. We'll keep on going. Uh, going, uh, keep on, keep on, uh, keep on going, um, keep on, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, this is interesting. Um, if you've ever involved yourself with uh, NASA or, or looked at the historical uh, aspects of NASA and what, what aircrafts and what spacecrafts were launched, uh, there's a number of series uh, that they started all the way back from uh, from the first Ranger series of spacecrafts. They've shooting them in uh, to orbit around planets, and then they've and then they uh, gather uh, information. But Ranger had a series of classified uh, programs. Go ahead, next. Uh, the Strategic De Defense Initiative by President Reagan uh, back in the 80s at Star Wars. It was also codenamed Excalibur. Um, the system could shoot down launched missiles from Earth and incoming objects from space. That last part, incoming objects with space, for years was top secret. It was never released. You could go back and look in books uh, and, and statements and, and speeches made by members of uh, President Reagan's staff and the military back then. And that ending, incoming objects from space, was never mentioned. And another thing that, that, that the uh, Strategic Defense Initiative did was not only was it pointed towards Earth, protecting Earth from uh, launched uh, missiles, uh, ICBMs from the Soviet Union back then in those days, or China or, or North Korea, it was also it was also capable of being turned around and pointed in direction of space. Oh wow! Okay, next, next one. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, okay. This is Surveyor series. Go ahead. Next one. Uh, Surveyor landed on the moon April seventeenth, nineteen sixty-seven. Surveyor three photographed the moon surface. A Surveyor three contained a classified device inside the lander. On November 20th, 1969, Apollo 12 astronaut Pete Conrad extracted that classified device from the Surveyor 3 and returned it to Earth. Years later, Pete Conrad related the device that was extracted from the Surveyor was a secret camera attached to a voice recorder. Although Conrad was never told or shown the photograph from the device, he surmised the photograph showed alien presence on the moon. The voice recorder could have picked up an alien language. Now, nobody ever knew this. I mean, the surveyor landed a couple years later. Uh, we know what Conrad did. We know he went over to surveyor, but only to examine it. And I think he was was going to get something off it. Well, that's what he got off the surveyor uh, uh, spacecraft. Now, go ahead. The next slide. Okay, keep on going. These are just uh, okay. This is important. This is the NASA's Deep Space Probes and uh, Space Surveillance. The 18th Space Surveillance Squadron, which uh, used to be part of the Air Force, is now part of the United States Space Force, is responsible for tracking 
a space object in Earth's orbit. However, the classified mission of the 18th is to monitor all space objects in Earth's orbit and deep space. The 18th monitors NSA series of remote tracking satellites, codenamed Starband, placed in orbit between Mars and Jupiter and between Saturn and Neptune. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay. These are some of the, it's probably hard to see, but these are some of the uh, spacecrafts that we have in orbit. Uh, talking about some of them, like uh, Stingray. Stingray was launched by the space shuttle STS 51J and monitors deep space radio waves in orbit near. I think I may be on a different slide because this is talking about twinkle eyes. Okay. Go, yeah. Go back one. Go back one. Yeah. Stingray. There, there, we, there go. we go. Yeah, we sing way. Sandal Slipper, launched by the space shuttle STS-27, monitors deep space signals in orbit near Jupiter. Now, I spoke yesterday about deep space probes, and 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 now I decided to bring this forth to show you, uh, show our viewers exactly what we have in space. Amber Light, launched by the space shuttle and STS-28, a secondary relay probe that transfers signals back to Earth. We had a relay system. Uh, anybody have anything, know anything about communications? Uh, in order to transmit a signal from one point to another, you sometimes have to have a, 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 commu a relay communication system or a repeater system that, that sends that signal back. We have those things in, in uh, uh, all around Earth, and, and we also have them in space. Uh, I understand, although I don't know for sure, for a fact, we even have them on, on Mars. Yeah. Case in point, the, uh, uh, the long distance system for long distance calls in the United States used to rely on, I believe, a microwave based repeater system that went from all across the country in the network. And that's how, before we had satellites, before we had fiber optics, this is how a lot of the communication was handled back in the day. So if you want to get something from here to here, you may bounce between one or additional places to get to it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And they do the same th same in space. Uh, uh, Cocker Peak launched in 1989, monitors selective frequencies in deep space. Uh, okay, and then now we'll go to the next slide. Twinkle Eyes, launched by Space Shuttle uh, in 1992, orbit beyond Jupiter, classified deep space telescope. Tight Tangle, uh, launched in 1997, we don't know, really know what, what it does. We know it was launched. Uh, NASA released that information. Uh, NSA won't verify it. I think Greenwald and some others have tried to get data on this, and it comes back heavily redacted. Phantom One was launched in 1975. It orbits Mars. Uh, NASA says it's a old uh, spacecraft uh, launched before Viking just to take pictures of, 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 uh, of, of uh, Mars. But uh, according to some people, it was launched and it was a it could be a launching platform for other, other deep space probes. Uh, go ahead, next one. Okay, Lancer King, Lancer 92, deep space mission, little, little else is known about it. Uh, Lancer King 2 launched in, 90, in, in 1983. Again, deep space uh, mission, orbits near an asteroid belt. Uh, the probe is used for radio signal relay, another relay. So, so, so this is when they um, were bringing all these payloads up on shuttle mission after shuttle mission where they couldn't talk about what was going out there. And really they were being crafted up. They were on some kind of a launch platform that once it was taken away from, if you want to call it, uh, the space shuttle, it went then and powered off to go out wherever it was going to go towards. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there were, uh, a number, I don't know exact number, 18 or 19 uh, classified missions. Uh, some, there were uh, some of the space shuttles launched and all you knew about it was a classified mission. Uh, you, didn't know, you didn't know what it was gonna do or, or it was a DOD uh, mission. So, uh, and, and that's what they were doing. They were launching these satellites. Uh, some of them though, I believe uh, that, we, that I haven't talked about, it's just too long of a uh, presentation is that uh, there were some of them that were launched by uh, 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 rockets from from uh, Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy, or or Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. I think one particular mission, 
uh, back in uh, 1994 caused a big disturbance in California. Uh, it was three o'clock in the morning when Vandenberg launched a classified rocket uh, and it went into space. And there was a number of people along the coast of California, uh, I guess party goers, I don't know who was awake at that time, but uh, they, uh, uh, they saw this. A lot of people photographed it, thought it was some kind of a UFO, but it turned out to be a classified launch of a of a US Air Force rocket, probably with some kind of spacecraft that went up to space. And and that's all we know. Yeah. Just to really qu uh, quick reflect on project names and names of conference rooms. Property says I've worked in government projects where every project in the series was the name of an alcoholic drink. They call this stuff anything. Just like conference rooms. I remember when I was at Disney, they had names for different shows or properties that were name of the conference rooms. Or I was on a conference call with Google yesterday, and the name of their conference room was The Price is Right, so they named everything after game shows. So you never know where it can go out. When I had a, uh, a company back in the day, all the different machines we had were all names of different cartoon characters. It was a fun thing. You just find a theme and you run with it, and just the point is, what are we going to call the next thing? Yeah, you know, there's people... And in the intelligence community, we used to have code names for different people. Uh, I, I don't even want to call. I want to tell you what they called me, but well, I will. It was called Bambi. I, my my name was Bambi. It was, if, if a new guy came in, they'd say, "Yeah, let's go back and get get cleared from by Bambi." And you know, the new guy would say, "Who's that?" Well, yeah. that was me. And it was just the nickname for different yeah. people. Like Casper Weinberger was called Dixie. Uh, in a White House, he was a uh, Secretary of Defense. Oh wow! But yeah, his name was Dixie. Uh, yeah. Why? I, I, you know, I don't know why they call him that. But, yeah. But um, yeah. Well, one, one quick question off the subject. Just want to get this out here. Someone, Justin's been acting this time and time again out in the chat. And I just want to get out there. Have you heard the story about Mario Woods? Can you can quickly confirm or deny it? Have you your thoughts on it? Well, I was at Ellsworth Air Force Base on a, on a temporary duty assignment in uh, 1977 uh, with o OSI. I was an OSI agent. Uh, he had he was involved in some kind of a uh, he was an Air Force security policeman assigned to him, the missile uh, security uh, squadron, uh, meaning he guarded missiles out in the missile field, the uh, ICBMs, and uh, he w he was involved in some sort of a incident involving a UFO. Well, I was back at the base, Ellsworth Air Force Base, and I was told by, asked by, by uh, one of the case agents that was investigating his incident, Jack Green, to go to the base hospital and pick up this guy's uh, medical records and bring him back to the office. And since I was just a newly new guy on the block, I said, okay. So I, I drove over to the base hospital, picked up his medical records, and took him back to the OSI office here at, at Ellsworth and gave him to Special Agent Jack Green. So that was that's my uh, uh, extent of involvement yeah. with him. But didn't you also Woods. handle his medical records or something? I think we talked about this before. Yeah, I, I brought I brought his medical records from the hospital to the office, yeah. and 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 I don't know why they needed them, but that's that was an extent of my dealings in that case. Yeah. A uh, quick comment, really quick, from Dave in the back. Dave, did you have a question about some of the yeah. secret space program stuff we've been yeah. going through? Yeah. Take it, my friend. Just just apart from the obvious observation of how deeply implicated NASA is in all this for all the going on now, which is no surprise because I heard Rick say it in Manchester. But uh, just, just thinking, the general question, Rick, of all this while I was just watching is what is the point of all this space stuff? And it's clearly, from my listening to you, to observe craft or whatever else activity in our solar system, isn't it? That can only be... That's the implication of what what you know what it suggests to me. All this stuff around Jupiter, stuff that can face other ways. You know, I, you know, what is the point of it? And I'm presuming the point is to observe other craft coming in. Or maybe I'm wrong, but that that's certainly what I'm taking from listening to you, anyway. Yeah, exactly. I although it's not specifically written. I don't know that that's ever been released of why we place these probes in particular orbits and <clears throat> in the in the uh, solar system but i mean anybody with an, any kind of intelligence could figure out it's probably watching for incoming uh, yeah. spacecrafts and now uh, there's also the argument that they're they're looking out for incoming comets and, and asteroids 
that could could be a, a, a danger to Earth. And I agree that, that I'm sure that's a secondary a mission of these of these uh, spacecrafts. And the ones around Jupiter, NASA will say, for scientific research, uh, uh, because there's uh, 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 from Titan and some of the other planets, I mean, moons of, of Jupiter and Saturn. So, uh, I mean, they, they, they could argue that too, but uh, I think uh, one of the, one of their missions is to watch and look out for incoming alien spacecraft. Right. And this is probably one of the systems that actually probably initially observed the Bernardinelli Bernstein comet, the size of a protoplanet. At least they're calling it a comet. I'm not sure if I'm believing it's still a comet yet because of its size and it's not really gassing. And it's just something that's worth further exploration as it gets closer. Yeah, that's a good observation. That's yeah, I absolutely. Agree. I agree with you. Back to our presentation here. Sorry to interrupt for a little bit, but I just wanted to get some interaction from some of our people. Uh, are we on, going on to the next slide or are we still on this one? Yeah, uh, we can go on to the next slide. I think we, we're, we're going to go uh, to the end because that's the meat of the, of the, of the uh, presentation. Uh, you know, what the United States Space Force does. Uh, they took over all controls of, 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 of military uh, uh, satellite launching and uh, collections from the United States Air Force. So the United States Space Force has all that. Now, uh, one thing I didn't mention was the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. What do they do? They, uh, their mission is classified. They, you know, they, that organization was classified right up until 1992. Nobody knew it existed. And it was, a, and, and so they, their mission is classified. And, and so I'm not gonna go into details on what they do but you can just imagine what, the, but if it's classified, what their mission could consist well, of. I'd like to bring something out about this. It's one of the fun facts that I know about sure. the NRO. They have two more advanced versions of the Hubble Space Telescope that were, they gifted to NASA a number of back like in 2012 or something. It was supposed to go up around 2020, but then everything got pushed back. Actually, the shuttle stuff happened and then everything got pushed back and they've been sitting out, they've been mothballed. But I believe these these giant space telescopes were actually initially designed to be pointed back towards Earth versus looking out in deep space. So they've got some additional levels of mag magnification and imagery uh, sensors that are far beyond what Hubble has. Yeah, since you mentioned it, I knew it to be classified. But yeah, you're right. They have they built two uh, a contractor built. Uh, they were going to launch him on two different uh, occasions, and I don't know why they didn't. And uh, but they were more advanced than the Hubble. Uh, but another interesting point is the James Webb Telescope that we have now. Um, the military, out of out of every two hundred hours, meaning two hundred hours of watching space, the military has forty hours classified time oh wow so uh yeah not a lot of people don't didn't know that one of the one of the whistleblowers talked about that in great great lengths because he worked for he had worked for nsa he doesn't work for yeah. him anymore but he's gonna be one of the whistleblowers down the road but he t he told us that uh, yeah james webb uh, that it's just not a, a nasa uh or civilian use because astronomers can buy time on the, the james webb telescope but the military has given time. Yeah, forty percent of that time is the military, which I'm sure would be NRO. Right, uh, I, I and think. it's one of those things you have to look at the cost of the James Webb Space Telescope. Either money coming in for the JWST was either being funded into something black budget because every single year they were working on it the budget ballooned and ballooned to a point where the last year of working on the telescope, I think the funding was equivalent to all the years before it. So it's just like, it was supposed to cost this much, but it ended up costing this much or even more. So it's one of those things they have to look at saying that either they really screwed something up or they've been adding additional things into it for military reconnaissance or the money is being siphoned out to help some other things that are going on behind the curtain. 
Yeah, you, you consider that, uh, you know, our defense budget is about $700 billion a year. And um, another interesting fact that I found out uh, working with some Senate staffers, you know that the Defense Department budget is no longer audited. They, they used to be, there was a bill uh, in Congress years ago, they passed a, a bill and there was a public law that said, uh, you know, every uh, two years or something, and I don't remember the frequency of it, you gotta, but they gotta audit all these different budgets. But they left out the DOD budget. Yeah. Now, two years ago, uh, sen a senator from uh, uh, Kentucky, uh, the eye doctor there, I can't remember his name off hand, but actually I had a, a, a conversation with him once. But anyways, he talks about $63 billion that the the military can't account for in the DOD budget. Yeah, it's over well, 60%, where did that 60, 60 yeah, of their budget did, they can't account for. Yeah, yeah, where did that go? Well, it went into the black programs. And one of these satellites are being launched or made. I mean, one of the contractors that we have that's going to be a whistleblower, I think, uh, talks about his company getting all this money to build these things, uh, reverse engineer and, and, and so forth. And so they put, uh, you know, billions of dollars into this as this particular contractor and he they build these things and then they give them to the military and they you never they never see them again. They don't know where they went. And then the military will come back at, he says, at 430 in the morning on a rainy, uh, rainy uh, uh, fall morning and say, hey, we need you to build this and this and this, but we're going to pay you around the table you know, and not in, in front, not with a check. And, and he, he talks about being the contractor is talking about being paid by somebody from DARPA or somebody from the government, uh, $200 million in cash. Now, I don't know what, I can't imagine $200 million in cash or where that would come from, but being paid in cash. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's completely just, just so people know what I'm talking about, yeah, it sounds funny, but yes, the National Reconnaissance Office in 2012 donated two additional space telescopes to NASA. Just to get into details, in 2012, the National Reconnaissance Office donated, let me make text bigger so everybody can read, donation to NASA was a declassification and donation uh, to NASA of two identical space telescopes built by the National Reconnaissance Office. The donation had been described by scientists as a substantial improvement over NASA's current uh, Hubble Space Telescope. Although the telescopes themselves are given to NASA at no cost, the space agency must still pay for the cost of instruments and electronics for the telescopes, as well as satellites to house them and launch of the telescopes. On February 2016, uh, the Nash Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, then known as the Wild Field Infrared uh, survey telescope was formally designated by Na uh, as a mission by NASA predicating or using one of the space telescopes. I had no idea that they've actually used one of those, but apparently they are. So there you go. Uh, who was bringing that up? Someone in the chat. Uh, I thought I'd bring that up because it's an interesting fact. And all I had to do was Google NRO NASA telescope. And there's a story. Well, thank you for that. I didn't. I didn't know all that. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's fascinating, yeah. Thomas. So, are we done with this presentation? Was there anything else? Yeah, yeah, we're done. We were done. We can take it off. Yeah, we can talk. It, it goes on a while, but uh, yeah, that's 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 it. Yeah, interesting conversation. I know you had another document. I'm not sure if you wanted to d dump into this. I know there's a lot of people probably in the no. back with their hands up and everything. Let me go ahead and get the. Where did I hide the name where it says chat? No, that's not it. Give me a second here. I'll find it. I went and turned off the thing where, there we go, group 13, open that up. Come on, you little bugger. There we go. Headline. There we go. Viewer calling. Yeah, great conversation so far. You've brought a lot of good things to light. I know there's been a lot of questions in the chat that I haven't gotten to. Does anyone in the back have any questions or things you want to bring up as I'm going to field the questions from our audience? No one. Amazing. <laughs> We've made him speechless, Rick. That's a good thing. I, I, I guess, I, yeah, they're still trying to 
uh, digest everything. <laughs> yeah. Let, um, go ahead uh, in the back. Uh, actually, David Smethurst, your hand is up, my friend. Well, I just wondered if we're going to pivot a little bit, and because uh, oh, this is fantastically interesting. But uh, for me, we were talking about, you know, I was talking about Groose sort of, uh, Grush, I should say, yeah. sort of collapsing the waveform a bit or whatever and confirming a number of things. Uh, now, he confirmed what NHI existence, bodies and craft, materials, treaties, uh, or malevolent action, those sort of things. I, mean, I suppose it means a lot of the witnesses that we've heard before, but we've sort of sort of dismissed or self-edited on, were actually telling the truth. Not everybody, but a greater proportion than we may be thought. And I just wonder, uh, from Rick's point of view, my question now is what's left? I mean, we've got like a list of things. So we might go, have we cracked anti-grav? Have we got ARVs? Are abductions being allowed? And it sort of goes down. Is there a cataclysm? Is there an Earth-Mars link? And it gets weirder and weirder as you go down that list. And I wonder from Rick, without giving out too much away, Rick, uh, is there much more to go on the uh, the list that Grush has uncovered, or are we nearly at the end of it? Uh, that's a bit of a broad question, but I wondered what you thought. Oh no, there's there's many, <laughs> many, 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 many more things that that we couldn't even imagine uh, yeah. to, to talk about that we that we got or we obtained through. Uh, our investigation of UFO, the UFO UAP phenomenon. Just to focus on one thing, then you know, the one thing that fascinated me was this issue of treaties because I always thought communications. I've read a few really good books with speculation on Eisenhower and whatever, but I always thought in my mind it'd be more like smoke signals. You know, it'd be quite basic communications, a bit like from the Eben stuff after the Roswell crash. But this idea of treaties is uh, fascinating, and I wonder, Rick, if you knew much about that but you could talk about or what they might be like or what you imagine those sort of arrangements might be like i mean i know they're not probably with everybody but have you heard much about that i don't know anything about the treaties yeah. uh, i've heard just what i've read out in the public but as far as uh in my dealings uh in my career as an intelligence officer i never heard anyone mention anything about a treaty and uh -huh. again i didn't have access to that access to everything no uh, no, know, no. It, it, uh, there was the abduction phenomenon it took me about three years before i was ever briefed into that i didn't believe in it until yeah. i got briefed into it and re realized it was for real so right. yeah, there's a lot of things that i have, haven't been briefed in you know what i appreciate oh. about you work really quick no you can have it dave in a second what i really quick i appreciate about you rick if you don't know about something you're not sure you say i don't know i wasn't yeah. involved with which is great because a lot of people you talk with you ask them any question They'll go on talking on it for a while. It just shows how honest of a man you are. Go ahead, Dave. No, I was just thinking what a rubbish question was because Rick, <laughs> I what Rick might know. But yeah, it, it, I just wondered, uh, then, Rick, if I might, uh, what, what would you speculate they'd sort of go for? I mean, the obvious thing is like tech, the stuff around abductions. I just can't think because, in a way, it's quite a, a different relationship. Isn't it? We would be quite powerless in a way. If you read Carso's book, there was a lot of stuff around, you know, the defensive posture of the states, and maybe there is that defensive posture that America has, you know, but we don't talk about. I, I just, I, I did, have you had any thoughts when you heard about that? Because I was so surprised when I heard him mention that. Did, did it spark anything up in your mind, what it might entail? To ask you to speculate. Well, well, yeah, I, I can speculate that there's, there's, there's so much to the phenomena that will never be disclosed. I mean, the dangers... Or the incidents involving uh, shoot downs or, or uh, military, US military personnel being killed by ETs, uh, ETs responsible for abductions and other hideous things. Uh, that, that's not real. Uh, that, I don't like to talk about it. And I don't mm -hmm. talk about it. But, but there's so many, uh, 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 d the demon side of this uh, this subject matter and the ets they're not all out there uh they're not all benevolent they're, they're not all out there uh, uh like et uh in the et movie uh there's so many that uh, will do us harm or have done us harm and uh i think and i don't know for this for a fact but i think we're just trying to stay on top of these uh, of the of the uh the dangerous ets yeah, that's uh, the vibe. Yeah, but uh, you know, 
one thing I want to mention to David is when I was in Blackpool uh, last June to do the awakening, uh, then then in, in uh, October I went to Manchester, but uh, there were two MPs uh, there, uh, members of parliament. Really? Our, our MPs, we would think they, I'm talking about military police, but <laughs> members of parliament in Blackpool. And uh, they were fascinated with the subject. They, they follow the circuit and uh, they, you know, they, they wished that the British government would come out with what they know. Uh, I just did a, uh, a series with Nick Pope um uh, uh a couple of weeks ago we filmed in california and uh you know he knows a lot that he can't talk about uh but uh, but there's a lot of things that the british government knows that uh, they they're not telling you the, the citizens well funnily enough i wrote to my mp recently and I, I know him a bit and i got a response from him and uh normally years ago it would have been owned up in you know what you're talking about and you know tinfoil hat but he was really quite he's a labor mp but he said he'd heard about it, he knew about Grush, Grush, and he said we're looking into it because, you know, and so the attitude is changing because uh, clearly the MOD said nothing and, and the MPs have been misleading their constituents because they've just been parroting the MOD line, which is complete rubbish because there's not as much accountability in our system as you know. I think it could be quite well, a hot, hot topic. I, I think that according to them, the House of Commons is more uh open to discuss this than the house of lords and i'm not a, an expert in your your government but i know there's two houses the house of the lords and the house of commons and that seems like the house of commons is more open to discussing this issue than the house of lords they had a big debate in 78 uh, house of lords admiral lord hill norton you'll hear timothy good mention it occasionally his book and that was the last big uh, debate, but there's a couple of intelligence oriented MPs, mainly conservatives, they're on it because they're into intelligence and it leads into that. So there's a few are interested, but I think the knowledge this crush thing is having such a big impact, the waves are sort of quite unpredictable. So, yeah, and I think, it, and particularly with Canadian stuff as well, you know, and that thing about the five eyes and how that links in. Yeah, I, I remember thinking it might well link in it when we might end up at the UN at the end of the year when that hearing starts. It might be quite an interesting sort of confluence of things that uh, start to more, more international openness. But yeah, in Britain, it's uh, just starting now. I think. Well, there's a we we just filmed uh, in February. We filmed a uh, a documentary in, in uh, and we have to go back to finish it uh, regarding the SAS, the Special Air Service, having a special uh, branch that uh, were trained to actually fight ETs. Uh, and we have the two former commanders and, and two other uh, uh, officers. Uh, and they, sh they showed us where they trained in the Shetland Islands. They showed us where they were, uh, where a secret location was underground uh, north of Leeds. Uh, and it's gonna be a great documentary when it, when it comes out. Now they never actually fought ETs but they were trained to, they were given briefings about him and how you can hurt him. So obviously your government knew something about yeah. it in order well, to be able to train, train him. Partly Reagan and Thatcher had an agreement with the special forces. That was, you know, the special relationship. They did a lot of stuff then, joint crash retrievals. And I've heard that yeah. Frank Milburn's talk, well, he's he alluded to that anyway. Yeah, Shetland Islands. I all can <laughs> just think of having these people uh, dressed up as knights on Shetland ponies with jousting sticks yeah. to go after the aliens. Sorry. <laughs> you got to have the Monty Python mindset. Really quick question for you. And I was about to get to you too, Anthony Mack, after the death. Thank you for that uh, super chat. But I want to ask Rick about this one here. Um, from Peggy with Crockett and Tubbs, one of our free, uh, frequent uh, viewers for a long time. She has a question. Have you heard of the Galactic Federations of Worlds or Galactic Federation of Peace, whatever it's called? And or even heard of the Jupiter Moon, uh, something to do with the Jupiter Moon of Ganymede. Uh, no, I, I I don't know anything about the Federation. Uh, I've heard, uh, you know, I heard people like uh, 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 people talk about it, and there's things on the internet about it. But I I've never heard anything officially uh, in my government service about any type of. Galactic Federation or any kind of treaties. Yeah. I know it's been talked like about that. from Canada, from the former head of Canada's uh, defense, and also from someone who was high ranking in Israel as well, but nothing ever in the United States. They've kept us out of it. 
Yeah, no, I never. Yeah. As far as the moon, uh, Ganymede, uh, yeah, there's a, a particular anomaly on that moon that sends is sending out sending out pulse signals, uh, and they, they they can't figure out how or wh why uh, or where the signal's coming from. That's that's the only thing I I know about that that moon. Wow, interesting. It's like we're here, we're here, we're here. Yeah, maybe maybe that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we've got a super chat that just came in. Let me go ahead and bring that up from uh, Anthony Mack after death, I believe. Let me go ahead and bring that up. Where is it at? There it is. Actually, uh, got two super chats I missed here. One coming in from Banana Bowie. Do you feel an organized disclosure march on Washington, D.C. would put some heat on the government? Now now we have to dress professionally, not like UFO clowns. <laughs> um, that way. Funny you should say that because uh, one of the meetings back in D.C., somebody in the, our group, we were at a large meeting room, a conference room, and somebody brought that up. As, you know, maybe if we had a, a, a million man and woman march on uh, D.C., uh, pushing for disclosure, we'd get some results. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think we need to build some momentum first. And if people want to start organizing marches, start organizing marches on your local television news studios get, and let all the other news studios know that you're going to be marching on them to go ahead and want them to cover it and bring out the truth. That's the best way we can, you know, sometimes we have to start on a local level and, and try and move things forward. But yeah, to try and get that many people to come forward, it's going to be difficult yet. We need to uh, Get some in, uh, more interesting information out there first. The next question coming in from Anthony Mack after death. Rick Doty, do you know about the Matthew LaCroix, and do you have any thoughts or opinions on his work that he's done? No, I I know nothing. I don't love him, but I don't know anything else other than I've read it someplace on the internet, yeah. but I don't know anything else. Yeah. I forgot, I forgot who he was, Thomas. I know the name, too. I don't know. I hear LaCroix. I think water, but I know it's not the water family. <laughs> <laughs> he, he published something. or uh, Maybe I'm mixing. No, I think I'm mixing uh, William Tompkins with him. So I guess we could do a Google search on him. Oh, he's, a, he's oh. about Asian civilizations. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes, on page black. from he the knowledge from black. the knowledge left behind from ancient civilizations to the nature of reality and the forgotten influence of our past no stone is left unturned in my endless pursuit of truth yeah, yes. my main goal as a writer and researcher is, is to objectively study all evidence and then formulate logical conclusions to help answer some of our most difficult questions so he's about the uh, ancient civilizations, which we know there's a lot out there. You look at Peru, you look at uh, Egypt, you look at India, you look at all this advanced stuff that we can't even create today. So is there evidence of ancient civilizations much more advanced than we were today? Yes. What happened to them? Did they go into hiding? Did they get wiped out? Did they leave and come back? Did they hide underneath the crust of the earth for every so often when the earth's oceans like to slosh across? Who knows? Could some of the alien craft we are seeing... Could they be all parts of that potentially? There's a lot of things we don't know. Maybe the government knows, but we're not sure where that's going to head. Uh, Larry, you have your hand up, my friend. I do. Um, and are you going to click it off now? I don't know if it goes off automatically. No, I click it off always. Okay. Um, so I'd like to go back to the uh, disposition of certain ETs, malevolence versus... <laughs> But benevolence. Um, I know you can't talk about what you uh, what you experienced, Rick, but you can speak at a high level in terms of your opinion, and I want your opinion. Are these uh, malevolent acts provoked, or do they have a grudge against us for some reason that we don't know, or do they hate us because we are such bad? people actors on the world stage um but then if they if they treat us with malevolence aren't they just as bad i mean i don't know um but what is your opinion is it provoked or is it a grudge from the ones that don't like us i, I and this is only my personal opinion i don't know anything official uh but i i think that uh some of the ETs that have been visiting us on Earth for years, thousands of years, 
they they've been uh, they know us. They they know humans. They know how to how we act. But there's some ETs that came here and hadn't ever visited Earth, and they look at us as being extremely hostile. And I think you could put yourself in their shoes. I mean, look at the look at what we do to ourselves on this planet. Uh, yeah. We kill each other. I mean, we 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 do unexplicable things to our environment, and we do uh, harm to uh, animals and. Uh, I mean, they look at us like these. This this planet, these are hostile creatures. Or even to our own I mean, humans, what we do with wars and genocides, and look what's going down in Mexico and other places. That's all around the world. There's a there's a lot of humanity that doesn't necessarily uh, get the A on the report card for being good. A lot of them are flunking off or kicked <laughs> out because they're so bad. Exactly, exactly. You know, if you're if you're an ET and you had the ability to observe earth and you watch uh for instance baltimore where all this the, the, these this horrible situation occurred where two people are killed 30 other injured or all these mass shooting incidents around the, the world not not just the united states but around the world i mean they just had one in in uh bolivia here not too long ago and, and they, they you know they control their guns down there and there's still a mass shooting down there so i mean yeah you have to you have to stop and think of what the heck what are these creatures on this planet doing to themselves? Why are they doing this? And then you consider if you believe in the 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 the, uh, the Evans and they live in a benevolent society, they've come been visiting Earth for two thousand years. Uh, they're not they're not going to hurt a fly. But then there's other ET races that 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 have and that are responsible for abductions and so. Yeah, I guess if they yeah. look at us and say, hey, if we're doing some of the stuff, look at all the stuff they're doing. Why should they get upset if we give them a little bit of their own medicine? Yeah, good point. Yeah, and if we I, do try to I, shoot I, some of these things down and we do our hostile towards their craft and other thing else, you know, uh, one hand washes the other. What's the old saying? The What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Larry? Okay. Yeah, Rick was uh, talking about like some species have – really don't know us that well and they come here and they look and they're they're appalled and there, there's a cartoon that uh speaks to that really well it's two uh, ets looking up at the crucified christ on the cross and they're looking up at it in fear and they're one is saying to the other you know what we got to do we got to get the f out of here <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation all the way around. Uh, yes, David, go ahead. I, I was just wondering uh, if you remember the Reagan transcript that came out of the allegedly Reagan and debrief Reagan, and I've always thought it sounded pretty genuine to me just because of the syntax, the way it was put together. They talked about five races, one of which, some, a couple of were benevolent. Can't remember if it was five or not, but a couple were quite, were evil, one of telepathic powers. It was all very... So if you've got a multiplicity of different races, and obviously you can't guess at what the motivations would be, uh, it seems to be quite a complex picture, really. And I, I, and I just wonder, again, with this defensive posture, you've just got to try and balance that out, really. I don't know if uh, what you think of that transcript, Rick. I think I've heard you talk about it before, that the, 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 you know why they're briefing Reagan and they talk about the different races. And uh, I, that, to me, seemed like it was like a, a balance of different you know, some benevolent, some not so, some misunderstood, and that was just the ones he knew about. You know. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the Reagan the Reagan transcript has been uh, verified by uh, one of the cur curators at the uh, uh, Reagan Library. Um, he acknowledges uh, he actually told a story uh, to some senators, uh, one particular one in Arizona. Well, he actually told this to uh, uh, a committee uh, uh, some time ago before the disclosure uh, process started. Anyways, about the, the Reagan transcript and how how he received it and how it was uh, uh, verified. And, and so I I think that that's a, a legitimate it's been retyped. I know that. Uh, but uh, I think everything in there is the same. Somebody just retyped it because the copy that was 
leaked wasn't a very good copy. Um, yeah. So yeah, oh, I believe oh. I believe that it, it, it is a legitimate. Uh, yeah, because it, it linked to what you were saying, Ralph, in a way, Rick, about the different types of races. I seem to remember, you know, the different things you'd observe yeah, in your time. There's, yeah. yeah, there's five. There's five of them that uh, I always keep it here because everybody. Yeah, these are these are the five. I think you, Thomas, has this. I sent it to him. I think you have. Is that one today you sent to me? No, no, no. A while back when we talked about the five different races. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got to. I have to find that one again. Yes. Yeah. And there's you know the the grays, the arcaloids, the quatiloids, the hepaloids, and the trantaloids. Yeah. Why they named them? They did. I don't know. DIA did that. I. There must be some kind of uh, connection or why they use the, the, that terminology. But those are the five. Yeah. Some people were asking. That I knew about. Some people in the audience were asking about some of the people that may have been gotten to, someone potentially, not if we want to name names, but throw, we'll throw it out there anyway. They're wondering if, if they've gotten to someone like John Greenwald because he's turned into a lot much more of a debunker and trying to, rather than look for the truth and bring stuff forward, he's, he's turned into this situation where it's almost completely always negative and trying to tear things down. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't, uh, you know, John's a good friend. I mean, I, I like John. I, yeah. I think he's done a, a great, uh, service to, uh, the FOIA requesting area and, uh, and even to the UFO community. I know he's been a little negative lately, uh, especially the recent documents that were released regarding Lou and the investigation that was conducted and things. But, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what is, uh, what is agenda or what is, motives are yeah not sure what anyone any of their motives are and everything uh good point rick thank you we're just trying to bring up some questions from the audience cosmo your hand is up my friend uh yeah rick i got a question to pose so when it comes to these races do you think these races have their own factions their own ideologies their own cultures own religions within their races or did you? Or do they all uh, confide under uh, one banner? Do you know the nature of these concepts at all between uh, each of these civilizations? And could you elaborate on any of it? The only ones I know about are the Ebens, uh, the Greys, or the what we refer to as Ebens. Uh, I've been. I was never briefed into anything that we've gathered with uh, uh, interviewing these. Uh, detained or guests that we had here on plan on on our planet so I, I i don't know i know they're all different creatures they're all different coming from different star systems and ironically we even know where planet they come from uh this list here that, that it, it lists the planet and the star system i mean i don't know how we found that out but i'm sure you know somebody within dia's that must have interrogated them and we've been able to communicate with these at least these five and um, but they're all different. They're different uh, biologically. They're different. They think differently. They have different brain structures. They come from different star groups. So they would probably have different religions and, and different thought patterns and, and, and different technologies. So I mean, it's just a guess on my part, but I was never briefed into the actual program of, of what they told us. Interesting. Thank you very much for that point. I know this is this is a subject that uh, Thomas w Tom Whitmore, who has done a lot of research into it. Uh, what are your thoughts on the MJ twelve documents? <laughs> the MJ twelve documents. Well, they are um, most of most of the MJ twelve documents are real. They, they, they contain uh, valid information, but then there's some disinformation. Uh, squeezed in between the lines, so to speak. Uh, they were created by the government to fool somebody. Um, it wasn't created by one person. I think the uh, the, the FBI investigation of 90, 87 and 89 proved that the government was involved, but it wasn't one person writing this because the, the, the factual nature of how the documents were uh, put together and and even uh, uh, the wording used, the grammar used. The FBI's are experts at that. They determined that there uh, 
there were at least uh, four people that generated those documents and they probably could be uh, traced back to the special means committee, which is a committee within the uh, defense intelligence agency. Also the CIA has one of those too. And that committee uh, is responsible for uh, creating documents that are released in counter espionage operations. That meaning if we, uh, we have a spy uh, inside the Soviet Union or, or back then East Germany, uh, we, and, and, the, and the Russians thought they were, this particular person was uh, the, on their side, but in fact, he was ours, a double agent. We would have to feed them documents. And those documents were created by this uh, place called the Special Means Committee. And I think that's where they were, were, were uh, and I'm ge guessing, I don't know for a fact, but I'm guessing that that's where they were uh, created. Yeah. Really great question from Ian Watts. I appreciate your candor on that and everything. Uh, David, your hand is up. If not, we'll get to Dave in one second. He may be muted. I just he want to. Muted. He muted. Yes. Yeah, so let me bring well. something up. Let me get. Let me get, bring something yeah, up here, Dave. I'm okay. Now, yeah. Just hold on one <laughs> second, Dave. I got to want to bring one thing up really quick first before we'll get to you. They talk about the Ebens, the Greys, potentially as a artificial intelligence, meaning they're not real. And we've been hearing this more and more. People are bringing it up. Is this something as a premise? For us to go ahead and say, well, yeah, we're killing them. Yeah, we're doing stuff to them. We're doing experiences. But they're not real. They're artificial. So we're not really doing anything. Is this almost a justification they're trying to bring up to make what they've been doing being okay, even though it's some nasty stuff at best? I'm not sure. I, I've heard a lot of rumors about that, that some of these uh, uh, creatures now... Let me go back a little bit. During my time, my 10-year career, or 12-year career in, in intelligence, uh, I knew of only five. Okay, now I understand that there's, there's as many as 25. So I, I don't I don't know anything about those others. I don't even know I can talk about the five. Um, there are some that are uh, could be androids or could be a mixture of, of, of some biological and then some AT uh advanced technology that we just don't understand uh i think linda howe did a really good piece on that uh but 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 that would be only my guess because i don't i don't know for a fact i i don't know i but i know that the five that we dealt with uh they were uh not all uh i mean some of them could possibly be some kind of a robot mixed in with a biological substance yeah so it's a mix of life and other life that we may not understand or whatever it is. So it's, yeah, yeah. Um, time will tell if they'll start bringing out some of the truth on this. We can start understanding it. Coming from another uh, super chat coming in from Cosmic Hue Toast. Uh, what kind of influence do you think ETs have in our existence, specifically Greys at Mantids? And do you know how many different, well, we already know oh, how many exist. Yes, that's it. Um, we know there's five. Um, do they have influence over our society, over our government, over what we're dealing with in our day-to-day uh, -day lives, potentially? Well, I would think I would think that the information that we gathered from them uh, was filtered into the government, probably the executive branch, beginning with Truman and then Eisenhower and Dean Kennedy and Johnson and uh, on well, upward. Um, and so there, there would have to be some kind of influence, but I, you know, I don't know what the influence would be and whether we would trust what an alien technology was telling us, uh, even though that, uh, the even showed to be benevolent, uh, you know, I, I don't know that we would trust everything that they were, they were saying. So, okay. uh, that, that would be a good, good, good question though. I, I don't know. And I, the manage, okay. uh, I don't know who they are. What, what group is that? Yeah, thank you very much. Hold on one second. Yeah, I've got four more that are already ready to pick up, so we'll deal with the other ones later. Yeah, yeah that's fine, yeah. All right, uh, next coming in. Well, sorry about that. I've got some prescriptions i got to get picked up. You get old, you get a pile of them. I got four from Costco getting ready to be picked up. Dave, I did. I think you had your hand up before, and yeah. you were 
next, and then we've got Mike. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, okay, yeah. Just, to, I mean, I think an MJ12, just to pivot again, must exist. Just it stands to reason there would be a core group coordinating the general response, you know, behind the scenes. And it seems from reading, it's probably linked to U.S. Air Force, CIA, DIA now, from based on what you were saying, actually, Rick, listening to you, maybe the DIA now, and maybe the DOE, because that's the sort of, an arm's length removed from Congress, less oversight, its own infrastructure. So it's likely that's the architecture of the program, just from listening. And I wonder if your team has come up, has thought about the problem of cracking the DOE SAPs, where we think a lot of the secrets may be held, but haven't necessarily got congressional approval. Have, have you sort of looked at that yet? Uh, or is that part of what you're looking at now? Because I think it's quite a thorny problem, or it seems to be. Or I might be wrong, I don't know. That's my impression. Uh our group, we're concentrating on uh, disclosure, which op we're concentrating on um, bringing forth whistleblowers, accommodating them, uh, and uh, supporting them. And uh, although we're not a uh, for-profit organization, we do uh, have some uh, people that support us with money, and uh, we support ourselves. Uh, uh, and and so we we support uh, in that way. So we have a lot of things on the table, but that's not necessarily one of them. That's it's something that is discussed in meetings, and uh, but but it's not a a, a primary uh, important item on our agenda. Well, I remember some of the guys uh, who you may come across, you know, are whistleblowers. They may have been working on a, on a SAP that's controlled by the Department of Energy rather than a, a military one. And so, therefore, you, you might cut across some of the testimony. You know, that, that's all I meant, really. Well, the DOE, the Department of Energy, uh, has a number of different organizations within. Right. The National Nuclear Security Administration is probably one of the most important. They control uh, the nuclear weapons in the United States, uh, although they're, the, the caretakers are the military, but, that, but they really... The uh, NNSA have the uh, the primary responsibility of, of maintaining them and and guarding them and so forth. Um, they also have a branch uh, that uh, transports security transports unit, and uh, that unit we found. Uh, this is after I left service. Uh, after I left uh, government service, this is some years ago. They have a, a classified mission that they could transport any materials any exotic materials, not just nuclear materials. So that, what's that tell you that, uh, you know, that, that yeah. this, these materials, these the ET uh, related uh, widgets, uh, uh, how do they get from point A to point B? They're done, they're done by the DOE security transport teams. Yeah, the DOE is where it's at. Because if you look at it, any research that's being done for any kind of an energy platform, whether it's yep. nuclear, solar, electrical, water, you name it. It's DOE, DOE, DOE. And we always look at, oh my God, it's at Lockheed. It's at all these different places that are out there. But we have to look at it and say that, well, maybe coming out of this, any of the kind of heavy duty research that we would think would be at Area 51 or other places maybe has been at one of our national labs, like Argonne National Labs or any of the other national labs out there who have been digging into a, a lot of these energy systems? Because I think that's their domain, well, isn't it? Yeah, uh, uh, Sandia National Laboratory is located on Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, the, one of the field offices of the Department of Energy is located there. Sandia Na National Laboratories is a contractor for the Department of Energy. Uh, Sandia National Laboratories and Los Alamos National Laboratories uh, 180 miles away, uh, deal with uh, nuclear material, nuclear research, nuclear weapons research, and uh, other energy researches, uh, energy, energy research. But they also have a classified mission that they support uh, uh, a uh, particular program uh, that uh, I'm not, I can't go into details on, but deals in this subject area. Yeah. I know Sandia yeah. la Laboratories, I've worked with them when I was at Kirtland. They had a, a lot of uh, fingers into the uh, ET technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As it turns uh, out, as it turns out any, 
particular, particular oh, someone's got their mic on i'm hearing a double echo coming okay we got it fixed all right um if we take a look at what some of the stuff that's out there with regards to the national labs a lot of them all have nuclear material and based on the scatter maps that we've seen coming from france anywhere where there's medical nuclear material uh, metil, uh, mil military or if it's nuclear waste it's like a uh Oh, and it's attractant to bring them to bring to bring the stuff in. So if any of you out there live near a national lab, be sure to go ahead and, and keep your eyes to the sky because guaranteed there's going to be things that are keeping an eye on this stuff because they don't like what we've been doing. Last question before we get to Mike. If the grays are bioengineered, do you think we are too? Because one of the things that I say is if you want to see something that's part alien, look in the mirror. That's a good point. Uh, you know, I have had this question uh posed to me many 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 times and uh in 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 different ways but uh you know that's interesting to look at there's uh you know dr green who is a very 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 good friend of mine we worked together uh for many many that's years dr kit green who's dr. well known kit in green. the whole area and i just like to i know we, yeah. we're all part of this and sometimes we have new people who are coming in dr kit green is a really important person he's been involved in a lot of different parts of ufology and trying to uncover the myth of not the myth, but uncover the truth of what's underneath this. Go ahead, Rick. Sorry. But, but he, he'll say that, uh, we, the, 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 the doctors and, and scientists, there's many aspects of a human body that they don't understand. Yeah. Uh, certain, certain segments of the DNA. And there's another, uh, entity, uh, that's not the DNA, and I can't remember what he called it, that's in a human body that they just discovered a few years ago that's similar to the DNA, but something different. Yeah. But they can't figure out exactly what that's there for. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've heard recently as well <laughs> from people's name who I'm not going to release, <laughs> who said there's no such thing as junk DNA, and there's a tie between our DNA and the non-human intelligence DNA showing there's an overlap of the pattern going between both sides and we're saying that yeah all this junk dna is out there for no purpose but more than anything if we've got samples of the non-human intelligence and we're bringing it across we can compare it to ours we wonder about how did we make so much advances into our dna and figuring out well a lot of it kind of came from the government's research into checking out the dna samples they had from the non-human intelligence good point yeah, good point. Absolutely. There's a, there's a particular person uh, <clears throat> within our group, a doctor. He's retired, but he's a, uh, a geo, a bio, geo engineer, a medical doctor too. But he talks about that. He talks exactly. He, he talks exactly the way uh, about the same subject you just mentioned about uh, uh, looking and how we how we develop. You know, it's a there's a there's a gap between how we found DNA. There's a there's about uh, I think he said a 42 month gap. You know we were experimenting here and jump ahead 42 months and we know exactly what DNA is. Now I don't know that people ever figured that out totally yet. Yeah, absolutely. Anthony Mack after this brings up one thing before Crypto Mike really thing really quick just uh, it's a ponderance more than anything to think we're the only being in the universe is just sheer ignorance and it's uh, outrageously un unrealistic don't you think absolutely yourself Rick yes absolutely yeah great point uh, Anthony Mack after that thanks for bringing that up Mike hey Mike 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 thanks for coming out today on this Saturday with I know you've got a lot of time going on with your family and I know Rick. Here's someone's birthday. If if you don't mind, we could sing someone happy birthday in a bit if you'd like that. <laughs> I don't know if we can get her in here. <laughs> if not, hey, we don't mind. Absolutely. Hey, Mike. I, I, I yeah, go ahead, Mike. No, 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 go. No, yeah, Rick, finish what, what you're saying, you Rick. Go ahead. Hold on, really quick. You were just finishing, and uh, we can leave no, it be between say, us. Yeah, we we. Uh, I have to. Uh, I have to take her to dinner tonight, so I got to leave here in about 10 minutes. So All right, that's good. Like, no. Happy yeah. birthday yeah. To, to the most beautiful woman in the world for you, my God. You are so sure. blessed to have yeah, such a sure. wonderful yeah. wife like that to be a part of there and supporting you. It's kind of like Lou's got Jennifer to stand behind him. You've got your wife to stand behind you. And it's that power couple that brings people together. 
that make, gives us the drive to get on to the next day. Just want to say how much we appreciate her and celebrate. Hopefully, you're taking her to something good. What's on the menu? Which what, what restaurant? I mean, what kind of food are you going for tonight? Uh, we're going for Mexican food. Oh, nice! Mexican. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, fajitas, fajitas, mm. Faji fajitas. <laughs> I'm just joking. Hey, Mike, go ahead, my friend. Sorry. Yeah, so um, we're not going to hold you up or keep you. You have a busy night tonight, Rick. Um, I wanted to ask you a two-part question real quick. Have you ever been or visited the White House? And the second part of the question is, if so, how easy or hard do you think it would be to be able to get in what should be the most secure building on the planet or one of um uh, amounts of cocaine that they found in very oh, let me bring up my baggie here White no House. it's just an empty baggie my god yeah <laughs> right so i wanted your opinion on that rick uh, i've been in the white house a number of times uh, there's different sections of the white house uh if you go on the white house tour you go in one small area uh you're you're guarded by secret service you go to a metal detector you go through a sniffer it sniffs your clothes, make sure you don't have any explosives. Uh, when we went, when we went through on a, on a tour, uh, some years ago, uh, the machine was broken, but they had dogs, had two different, uh, dogs, secret service, uh, drug dogs. So you get through one, you got to go through another one. So, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different things. And plus beforehand, you had to fill out a, a, a form and you had to present an ID and, and the form was pretty, uh, uh, intrusive about if you've ever done this or been here and so forth and so on. So it's, it's, they screen you very carefully. And when you, and when you go in, uh, there's always secret service, there's cameras all over the white house. Uh, the last time I was in a white house was in, uh, 19, uh, 2019. It wasn't, uh, it was on a tour. We were being escorted in to speak to, and the, the uh, President Trump's scientific advisor, uh, m one of the people within our group, uh, we were talking about this subject matter and we went into a conference room just off the East Wing and uh, still it was very, very detailed. We always had a Secret Service agent with us with exception of going into the room, but you still had to be screened. So it, 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 it's pretty, it, the screening is, is extremely thorough and again, there's cameras all over the place. So how the oh. hell do you think the copious amounts of cocaine? Oh, be careful in, in where we're at. This is going to get us in trouble again, but go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I was just curious what your opinion was, Rick. Since you've been there and you're familiar with it, how is it even possible that that could have actually happened, in your opinion? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't know. I, uh, there, there has to be an answer to it, and I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. Absolutely. I've set a timer for you, so we're going to kick you out here, out of here, Rick, in four minutes and 49 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay thank you. <laughs> because I know you'd hang out and everything, and I last thing we want to do is uh, keep you from celebrating this wonderful special day with your wife. And if you need thank to leave earlier, that. if she's over there and you need to go, we understand. No, she put up five, so five minutes I got. Okay, good. Five more minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a great show with you today, Rick. Yesterday and today, oh we've got a double it's, dose it's, of Rick Doty, and the audience has been just such a, a great uh, uh, sport going through this whole bit and asking a bunch of questions, bringing it forward, and great to hear about the stuff from the space program and everything. We've got a couple more people, the hands up for the end of the show. Uh, actually, not the end of the show, an interview being around. Cosmo, bang, your hand is up. Uh, hey, uh, Rick, I got a question posing. Uh, when it comes to these whistleblowers and representing them, are any of them exhibiting symptoms of psychological trauma or PTSD, considering you dealt with in the deception programs? Um, is there any sense of betrayal or any type of vitriol that these whistleblowers might have against their saps that they used to work for? Was there like a turn? Uh, uh, was there a, a change of heart on their end where uh, they are possibly coming forward now because of of uh, current events and what it might have transpired within these programs? Um, just to, you know, uh, elaborate on that. Well, that's a fantastic question. Uh, 
Yes, but they're screened. There, there have been some. Uh, we had a case of two whistleblowers who came to us, came to somebody within our group, wanted to uh, uh, come forth with information about the particular agency that they work for, and I'm not going to talk about which agency. And uh, we sat down. I didn't, but our people within our group sat down and and listened to them. And uh, over a period of an hour. Uh, all he wanted to do was uh, 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 settle a vendetta against the organization. And as we got into it and started investigating him, in fact, he did work for that organization. He did have a security clearance. He did have access to a special access program, a sensitive compartment and information <laughs> program, but uh, he was fired. So we weeded him out. And there probably were others that, that I know a lose group had one guy that's, that kind of fit that that description too. So, but some of the some of the uh, uh, whistleblowers that we have, we have about almost thirty of them. Uh, do do have some uh, PTSD uh, uh, because of an incident that they were involved in, where something happened involving uh, them, uh, like a pilot in an aircraft almost causing this pilot to uh, crash or forcing this pilot to ditch the plane and him injecting in a wilderness area that uh, it took the, the search and rescue teams uh, five days to find him. So yeah, that would, you know, that would certainly uh, cause PS PTSD. Yeah, against absolutely. Me, and, I know, yeah. and I know Andy had his hand up as well for the very end. You've got a minute, 19 seconds, make a quick Andy. Uh, no, no, I, I can't formulate the question I wanted to ask Rick uh, the right way. So I'll I'll contact you another way, Rick. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll get there in the last second. I yeah. want to thank you, Rick Doty, for coming out today. It's been one heck of a show. It was great yesterday, and you popped in the last week. We went an extra hour, and it was worth it. And then you're here for another today for another two and a half hours. Uh, you know, thank you for taking the time and for, really? you know, giving us your mindset. You are unbelievable information. I really appreciate, and I'm so thankful for your participation and being part of the community here at Disclosures Tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I uh appreciate every single one of your questions. I admire everyone in this room or everyone in the chat. Larry, I mean, I I consider you a friend now, Mike, uh, oh, David. Uh, I'll be back over in UK uh, in August. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone's support of me and, and uh, allowing me to come on and share my thoughts and beliefs. To, with you. Yes, absolutely. It's been a privilege, right? Been a privilege enjoy, to speak. enjoy the uh, Thank you. enjoy the chips, the salsa, the uh, uh, the the um, uh, if you want to call it fajitas and everything. And that's the timer going off, which means your five minutes is up, and it's time to go okay. spend the time with your wife. I'm kicking you off for your wife's okay. sake. Okay, I'll have a margarita have a for. Night, well, I want to drink one of them. But... Don't, don't, Rick. Okay, okay, everyone. Good night. Good night, Rick. Have night. a good one. Good night, Rick. Have a great night. What a great time with Rick Doty. Holy cow, it's his wife's Woo! birthday. What a freaking uh, great conversation going into some of the stuff is about the Space Force. And it's great to see we've got some stuff going on with the Space Force that isn't way the heck out there where we're going. We have portals going to Mars. And we've got this craft that can go ahead and take E.T. home. No, it's more of a realistic view of we've got a bunch of satellites and things we've put up going far out from our planet to go ahead and actually do some observations of things before they get to our homes, our home place called earth. Larry. What? I don't know. You're up there. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are your thoughts on today's conversation? Anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to jump into or, or no, no. Think... yeah, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was really good to speak to Rick. Uh, it was just brilliant. I mean, I've listened to him for ages. You know, when I was at the Manchester conference, he took the time to speak to everybody. He was dead welcoming. I didn't, there's loads of people. Speak. He took the time to speak to everybody, answer questions. He was really good. You could tell he was a really good bloke, genuinely. And it was great to speak to him. And, and listening to him on your show particularly, uh, he's really given us a lot of good stares over the last six months, really. So, yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, we could have asked him loads, couldn't we? I mean, there's so much. We could have covered but i think in the time 
it, it was great. And the stuff he said yesterday, he's all about Twitter today, about is it Australia and all the rest of it. So it, he's fantastic. The gift that keeps on giving, although he's a bit more than that, but he's a, it, I've, no, it's fine. I've been really enjoyed it, really. Yeah. And there's been, a, you know, there's been a lot of negative people going ahead and talking to him on Twitter and other areas. But you know what? Irrespective of what he did in the past, he's trying to, you know, really take disclosure and move it forward in ways that not a lot of other people can based on where he's been. Yeah, they're going to have to either decide to bury the at it or not. That was the decision. When I listen to him talk and then I've seen what he does, you have to judge people by the deeds, I think, ultimately. And yeah. watching what he's done and what he's about, I thought, well, he was under orders at the time. I mean, I understood why he did what he did, to be honest with you. I didn't. I, it wasn't too ridiculous for me anyway. People may disagree with that. He, he's under orders and he's in the military. But since then, to me, I think he's he's done great. And what Grush's testimony has done is show some of the more outlandish things he said that some people have been saying are part of his still spinning. Yeah. Actually, have been proved to be correct. So uh, I think you just have to bury the hatchet and take the decision. My decision has been for quite a bit of time now that he's a genuine bloke and, and he is. Just you know, he believed in disclosure, and obviously that's what he's working on. So, some people will never get that, will they? And that's up to them. But that's my view, anyway. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. Hang out after we uh, end the show. It'd be great to talk to you off air and everything. I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. It's been a great show. I'm not going to have. There's someone who gave us a super chat at the beginning. I'm not going to be able to get right now because. I accidentally closed the browser, so let's take a look and see who we got. Paul Murphy, Anthony Mac after death, Cosmic Q Toast. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Cosmic Q Toast again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Anthony Mac after death, Banana Buoy, um, Susan Goff's time traveling, uh, Caucasian, Scrumpy Joe Ramsey A, and Susan Goff's time traveling, traveling uh, Caucasian again. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone's love and support for the show. Every dollar that comes in disclosure tonight goes back into our production fund. Trying to end this before Cupcake says, I need to go out and go pee really quick. I want to thank everybody who came out and has been a part of the chat and is still part of the chat, if I can find. Where did I hide the chat? Oh, there it is. Let's see who we still have out there in the chat right now. And I can thank everybody from the names of, oh, God, I need to make it bigger. A. Phil, Amy Ham, Anderson Stickle, Aubrey McLeod, Bush Light, Cat, Cosmic Uto, State of Derivations, Gray Troll, Ian Watts Official, uh, J.R.D., Joe Quisner, Kelly Barot, Mac Duffin, MacArthur Lewison, Mick Mick, Michelle, uh, Mitch Cernowski, uh, Mr. Catfish 2100, Yerp, 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 Niles Guy's been here along with OG Skywatch. Ah, uh, God, I can't even read this next one. Let's see who we have there. We've got Peggy with Crockin and Tubbs. We've got PC Pete Liebel. Uh, down a little bit. Project Grudge, thank you for coming out here today. Absolutely. Raving Creek Charms, Robert Roger. Ryan Baker, Shelly Montgomery, Star Duster. Susan Goff's time ca- traveling Caucasian. Sven has been around all the way from Sweden. Uh, the Demons here, The Observer, along with Tony D and Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. I want to thank everybody for uh, coming in today. What a great conversation. What a great show. Holy cow. I also want to thank the people in the back, especially David Smethurst. F- finally, the first time I've gotten to meet you. It's been phenomenal, my friend. Yeah, it's great. Same for me. It's been great to listen to everybody and meet everybody in person. It's been fantastic. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Also want to say thanks to... Andy W., thanks for coming out today, yelled Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. That's no problem, Thomas. Yeah, I've been quiet, but really uh, interested in listening to Rick tonight. Some great questions and answers. Yeah, from him. absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, sir. Also, Cosmo Fang. Thanks for coming out, Cosmo. Yeah, it was a pleasure, and Rick uh, had some very insightful answers today. Uh, there was a lot of information divulged, and I'm very grateful. Oh, I am grateful beyond belief. Absolutely. Also want to thank Evan B. Thanks for coming out today, Evan. Larry Gurnt, Larry, Larry. Thanks for coming out, my friend, as always. You've created a, a place where, ta- where Rick Doty feels comfortable. That's and good. And it, a lot of people feel comfortable. Our chat feels comfortable. Our, our, our viewer column feels safe. comfortable. It's creating that safe space, that opportunity for people to be able to come forward Talk about disclosure in a positive way, no matter how we look at it. And we'll get there one way or the other. I also want to thank Lord William from all the way from Los Angeles. Thanks for coming out today, Lord William. Hey, thank you, Thomas, for having me. And I really appreciate you. And have a good night. 
Thank, thank you, you sir. sir. Appreciate you as well. Absolutely. Also want to thank uh, Michael Sokoloff. Michael, thanks for coming out today, buddy. You're welcome, Thomas. I wouldn't miss it for all the elephants in Texas. Yes. And for people who've been trying to call me the next day or so, apparently in the mornings when I'm dealing with stuff, I accidentally want to go to turn off my alarm. I subconsciously turn off my freaking phone ringer. So if you try to get a hold of me and you haven't, well, that tells you why. Also want to thank Mike Disclosure. Mike, 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 thanks for coming out. Oh, another great Saturday show, Thomas. Very, very good. Absolutely. Better than I better than I could have ever have imagined. Paul Murphy from the great state of Canada. Thanks for coming in today, Paul. Thanks for the super chats as well. Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Okay, he just sent another super chat, it looks like. Holy cow. Did he send another one? With a B ends with a B. Ten seconds. Yes. Peter Peter Panda, he came in at the very end. Thanks for coming in today, Peter. Yeah, it was a good show. I was just mostly listening to the interesting information. Absolutely. Want to thank Rachel Smith for your great conversation and for your question for Rick earlier today. Thanks for thanks for coming in the back. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was a great show, especially with Dodie here. Oh, absolutely. Suwan Patel, the man, the legend. Thanks for coming out today. Great show again, Thomas, and Rick was on fire. Thank you. So, Shelly, you've been quiet, but you're there as evident as ever. Thanks for coming in today, Shelly. Thomas, panel, chat, and Mr. Doty, thank you. Okay. Always. I'm getting great the call. Show. Cupcake has to go pee on that note. Syrup, thanks for coming out today, Syrup. Let's make it quick. No, it was a great show today, uh, tonight, Thomas. Thank great you very show. much. And Xavier B., thanks for coming out today, Xavier. You're welcome. Great show as always, Thomas. Yes. And as we usually say at the end of every broadcast, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everybody. Go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. See you soon. Good night, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye.